pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. How is everyone this evening? I hope everything is going well for you. It's a good thing that you're all here this evening. That means you made it through whatever was going on, whatever craziness that's out there in that world. I'm glad that you were able to join us this evening. I know I was just talking to Angel just before we started. She was finishing up telling me about the hectic week that she had this week. I can't say that my week was necessarily hectic, although there were some things that were trying for uh, for me this week concerning some things that I'm dealing with in my physical body. So, oh, my goodness, these bodies. Boy, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for my new one. All right. I'm ready, but we have to wait. I'm ready, but we have to wait. I'll take it any day, Jesus. That's when the dead in Christ rise first and then we which are alive and remain <laughs> shall be caught up when this incorruption will put on, or excuse me, when this corruption will put on incorruption. Ooh, I'm ready for that. Mm, mm, mm. So let me go to my friends this evening and see how they're doing. Sister Angel, since I was just talking to you, how are you doing this evening? Oh, not too bad. Just, um, Oh, trying to trying to get it together. I feel like a constant cycle of me trying to figure out how to get it together. It is really difficult. I know people think being a stay at home mom sounds like it's easy and they haven't done it, but I tell you, it would be so much easier to have a job. <laughs> and I've had jobs. It was a lot easier for me. And it's so hard being having to be the grown up. It's you know, when you have a job, you kinda of have the grown up a grown up to tell you what to do because you have a boss and They've already determined like what you got to do for the day, and you know, oh well, I just if I do X, Y, and Z, then I've done my job for the day. But when you're the, it's like a manager position, really. Mm. It's like being being a stay-at-home mom. You have to manage a household and all the kids, and and uh, and and you know, have <laughs> make the structure that you know nobody provides it for you, and uh, it's 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 tough. It's really tough. You know, it's an art. I have so much respect for. For people that you know, gener you know, a couple generations ago, or this was just a, a a normal thing, and now it's it's really feels like a lost art that a lot of us grow up and we don't ever have we don't have a, an example who did it, you know, because our mothers, you know, worked or um, you know, my mom, you know, she she worked, and I mean, my family, my parents were divorced, so um, uh, I guess the closest thing I've had to it was my grandmother. But I never had to see her in the in the you know uh, the midst of raising five children by herself you know not by herself but like as a, as a stay at home mom I never I never witnessed that I was the only child that she kind of raised and um, uh, she, it, by the time you know when your grandmother raises you and they're you know a, you know sixty or over they're it's a it's a different thing than, than when they were in their 30s raising children you know they're mm -hmm. kind of on autopilot at that point so um uh, just always trying to to figure out uh how it was done it's a totally different mindset it's a, it's a totally different mindset that's required um uh but i know uh now i see with the whole you know schools being shut down i know people think it's like a devastating thing but i think it's kind of wonderful because a lot of people are turning to homeschool and um, you know, maybe a lot of mothers, you know, at least who can, who are in the position that they're even able to, um, you know, they'll be the ones that end up staying home 
And, uh, you know, I think that that could end up being uh, like a, a, a hidden like silver lining for a lot of uh, the kids coming up right now, because, um, I, you know, I, I couldn't imagine getting put in my kids in school nowadays. Like I, I often think about it. I consider it like maybe it would be better for them because I don't feel, I don't feel up to the challenge. It just is a lot of responsibility to, to handle their education and everything else. And it was just so easy to just put them in school, you know, and they get their mm-hmm. socialization. But it's just the prospect to me is just terrifying to even even out here in the country where we have a pretty nice, you know, seemingly safe elementary school right down the road. I, f- I fear for them too much. I just I don't I can't imagine trusting my kids around strangers. Uh, I don't even think I, you know, like I, I don't know when that became normal, but um, to mm-hmm. me, it just doesn't seem seem normal I know it worked out fine for me but um I know a lot of kids that I grew up with you know the abuse and the you know things that they endured happened because they were not at home with their parents it was because they were Mm -hmm. in school or had some after school program or something like that and they're just exposed to straight you know strangers Mm -hmm. um and it and 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 it's taken for granted that that's a normal thing but you know, <laughs> I'm very Excellent careful about ages. where I let my kids. Yeah, because like even at family gatherings and stuff, you know, you never know mm-hmm. exactly who's around, and mm-hmm. I keep an eye on them even then because it's like somebody you just don't know. Even in even in the family, if it's a big enough family, you don't know everybody um, and what they're capable of. And all it takes is a is a moment. You know, all it takes is a moment oh, yeah. for something sure. to happen that can be never never undone, and that never happened to me. And I'm totally blessed for that, but. Anyway, so yeah, I, uh, but I, I think, uh, I don't know if I, Ben, I think you're in a state where there isn't school still, right? In uh, Michigan, my, do you know? Well, my kids go, well, my kids go to a private Christian school. Oh, well, I'm sorry. My, my son does. My daughter's in college How now. How old but, is he? Okay. So yeah, see, I thought they were both in college. Oh, well, my son just turned uh, 17 today. So, okay. So, yeah. Um, so he's older, but so they are open. Schools are open there or? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I know I've heard some, some are still closed down, which is unimaginable. Well, I know Canada, they're on full lockdown. So. Yeah. I know there's a lot of weirdness going on in Canada too. Uh, before we go too far down the road, Angel, I always forget to do this with you guys. So I at least want to do it periodically. Would you go ahead and briefly talk about uh, your channel and give everybody your channel name so that if they uh, somebody who's just joining us or, or been listening a little while and don't, don't know that you have a channel and that you do actually uh, have your own topics and things that you discuss um, yes. periodically. Yes, and my channel name is just Angel Martin. And um, uh, lately it's been mostly we just um, mirror the broadcast that we do on here. But I know Ben and I are planning to do a conversation here soon on my channel um, regarding a few uh, poorly understood uh verses and chapters in scripture um you know trying to take a more uh in-depth approach to things like james as opposed to kind of you know taking the lazy way out of of you know sometimes you explain certain verses to people that are you know workers of iniquity and although it makes sense to you it's not you know there's just something incomplete about it it doesn't feel like the true honest explanation we know the explanation isn't that you have to work for your salvation but um, a lot of the ways that people explain a lot of these difficult verses are are really not complete, and they just leave you with a feeling of incompleteness when you when you when you make give these explanations. And so we're wanting to tackle that. Um, but I do have uh, a lot of content from you know the past couple of years that I did that was just just me, um, just you know just my my thoughts, just me talking. So I haven't done that in a bit, but. Um, but yeah, we, yeah this, you know, I cover some interesting stuff. I go into a lot of uh, stuff that I might touch on here in the, uh, you mm-hmm. know, during the panel show where I'll talk, you know, I'll reference things like my upbringing or my experience with like a bloodline Luciferian family and, and all of that. <laughs> I go into depth about it a lot more um, on my own channel. Um, uh, I've, you know, given a, um, some pretty in-depth testimony about a few things like that, so. If you're interested, um, just go and check that out and go back to some of my earliest videos and it'll be there. Thank you, Angel. Appreciate that, sweetie. And then also, Ben, uh, 
I know you don't have your channel up and running yet. I know you're working on it. Ben's a perfectionist, so whatever it is, you're going to have to have all his I's dotted and T crossed. T's crossed before you get started. So why don't you tell us about yourself, maybe your biblical perspective, and what you intend on doing when you finally do a, a channel drop. Um, well, yeah. So right now I just have a couple playlists. Um, and I get the only thing really on there is my my impeccable taste in music. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I do I do plan to put some um, uh, content up there. I, again, I am very yeah, I am kind of academic in that in that sense, and I like to tie things together. Uh, and I also like to I like to put content up that you know you're not going to find somewhere else because what's the point of doing it if if if, if it's already been done? So uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to put I don't, definitely don't want to put content for the sake of doing content. It is. Uh, it is very um, time consuming um, because I do put a lot of content together for work as well. So um, it, it is time consuming and I, yes, I am a perfectionist. And uh, sometimes I wonder if a blog would be more my style just because you could put revisions mm. on it, you know, like version 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, <laughs> right. et cetera. But uh, we'll see. Uh, I definitely uh, have some ideas for some content and, but for now, uh, yeah, you could pretty much find me on, on, on your channel and, I'm kind of incubating some of my ideas here, you know, some early ideas that I, I, I come across. Uh, I think we have some good conversations here. So uh, that's pretty much the extent of my online presence at the moment. Okay. Thank you, Ben. And what's this other guy's name? I keep forgetting his name. Oh, yeah, Jordan. Gerald. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Something close to that. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> um, I feel attacked. Oh, come on, oh, what else you, is new? you know, we're just teasing you. How are you doing this evening? I'm fantastic. A little tired today. Okay. How was your week? Was it good? It was very busy. I can't believe a whole week already transpired. I haven't like had one moment of downtime. Mm -hmm. I was just looking up. I was like, wasn't it just Monday? Here we are already Saturday. <laughs> so, wow. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself or people who are just joining us may have never heard you before uh, and, and what your channel is about. Well, my name is Jordan. I am definitely the coolest person you'll ever meet. My channel name is Revivalist for Christ, where we focus on equipping the 21st century Christian, giving them all the tools and resources that one would need to defend their faith. So a heavy emphasis on apologetics. Uh, right now, I am doing a weekly podcast where I have a guest on each week. And this last Thursday, we started a new series on the parables of Jesus Christ. Wow, that was very succinct. I'm actually <laughs> shocked. <laughs> I thought you would carry on about yourself for at least 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Actually I caught your your podcast about uh parables and it was very good. I was very impressed. That was very nice. And then well, um I'm sorry, go ahead. Well was it too much to put that in the comment section? I'm just wondering. I you mean I, I did not say it that even in, didn't I put a smiley face in the comment no. section? No. Nope. Yes I did. No. Yes, I did. I challenge you. Go back and look. I did put a, a smiley face okay. in your live stream. The live yes, stream I did. is not the comment section. It's comments when it's live. <sighs> yeah, argue with that logic. Okay, so while you're working on that one, um, I, I think that uh, for those who are joining us, you don't know, I haven't said this in a little while, the idea of this podcast broadcast whatever you want to call it is myself and my friends people that i've met here on youtube that we just get together and we discuss all different kind of topics things whatever i always ask my friends whatever they want to talk about uh i kind of insisted on jordan's topic tonight because i just found it very interesting when he started with, uh, talking about it which jordan what's your topic again tonight I'm going to be oh, okay. talking about the Eastern Orthodox Church. Thank you. So uh, when we get to Jordan and we talk about that, 
See, that's something that if somebody tell me, oh, let's talk about Ethan, I'd be like, mm, I don't want to hear. But when Jordan was talking about it to me, I actually got excited about it because I was learning things I did not know. And because he loves all this stuff about church history, he makes it get exciting for people to learn about. Uh, and he's passionate about it. And it translates and the Eastern into Orthodox his Church. church it's really catching on. If you knew, like, if you saw, mm -hmm. like, how popular it's getting and how, like, people who are, who weren't even believers are now getting, like, sucked into um, Eastern Orthodox. Um, mm -hmm. As soon as, like, it's, it's, it's like a trendy new thing for young people, uh, people that, you know, would probably otherwise have actually believed, you know, the true gospel, or at least, you know, you know, been, had a biblical understanding, they get turned on to the Eastern Orthodox Church and, um, and they think it's like the ultimate, you know, truth or something that they've discovered. It's really sad seeing how, yep. how that's happening. Uh, so it, that makes it really interesting if you know how, how uh, popular it's becoming. And a lot yes. of people just think it's Roman Catholicism rebranded, but it's a completely different religion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yes, and that maybe was... one day we could do the separatist Catholics too. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. That would be great. Yeah. See, the set of the Cantus, yeah. That's a big thing, too. Yeah, see, if I set off on my own to try to go find out about these, I would, first of all, I wouldn't have any interest because, you know, it's like when the, the Bible says that uh, once you find Christ, I'm paraphrasing this, you don't you only hunger and thirst after righteousness. You don't you don't hunger and thirst after unrighteousness. So I'm not going out there listening or wanting to hear these different false ways. I don't really have any interest. It's not my thing to go like deconstruct those things and go, see, this is why this is wrong kind of thing. If I hear about something, I might speak on it. But other than that, I don't go looking for it. Where Jordan will go, oh, that's a new thing. Let me go dig into that and find out all what they believe. And he'll, he'll have it dissected within 24 hours, which is beautiful because he has an interest in that. And his mind works for that. Me, I'd be I'd lose interest about, you know, 12 seconds into it. So as as friends, we all bring some different dynamics to the table here. Angel is a former atheist. If you haven't heard her testimony, uh, it's here on the yeah. channel. You can go back, but you can also go to her channel and hear her testimony. It's beautiful. And then Ben has his own testimony, but he's a very analytical person in his thinking, very um, methodical. And I like the way he just focuses on stuff and he like doesn't leave any eyes un dotted in any T's uncrossed. And then Jordan, church history, me, I just consider myself a sister in Christ who shares, uh, you know, things that she sees in the scripture and or has discovered with all of you. And I'm sorry, I didn't even mean to delete that message. If you could repost them, I don't know if I can undo it. Hold on. I'm sorry. I clicked the wrong one and held it. Jesus loves me. I'm sorry about that. Go ahead and put your comment up again, sweetie. It held it and I tried to hit Go ahead and, and let it go through. And I hit the wrong one. So don't think I deleted you to, on purpose. It was an accident. So uh, I allow people to come in here and speak their mind as long as they're not resorting to ad hominem attacks against any of us here or in the chat. If you come in with false doctrine and dogma and that's all you want to do is drop a bunch of comments, then you're probably going to get deleted and blocked. It's not what this is about. These are believers that are coming together and we're fellowshipping and we're sharing and talking and laughing and having a good time. So if you're going to have a problem with any of that, this, this is probably not the form for you. Okay. Um, tonight we're going to do, we're going to go back to like our original format. Last week we just kind of went where the spirit led because I had the outline for what we were going to do and it just didn't go that way. And I, I, I try not to step on that. And we ended up talking about some very important things. I didn't even get to some of the topics we wanted to discuss because I believe this. I'm like, if the Lord doesn't come uh, and we're all still alive, we have time. And if he does come, none of this is going to matter anyway. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't worry about it. We get to it when we get to it. Uh, so if it's the Lord will, we'll get to it. So tonight I'm going to to. Uh, we're going to do our helpful tips and then we're going to get to some trivia and I'm hoping, if you guys haven't seen it, we're hoping that Jordan is going to behave himself this evening because Jordan's very competitive, so I'm going to apologize for his behavior in advance if you're joining us for the first time. 
I'm like, actually going to be very well behaved tonight. Once we get to I that segment, I actually have something I'd like to say. So I, I don't believe it, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. Okay, <laughs> helpful tips. Uh, let me go to Brother Ben first because he's a man of few words, and I want to get him talking tonight. Brother Ben, what's what is your helpful tip for everyone to see? Okay, my helpful tip is uh, how to narrow uh, the scope of your search when you're on the internet. So a lot of times you might be interested in finding something, but you know, just typing in that uh, text might it might bring back results from all kinds of websites that, and it may be too. It may be uh, you know you may have a very generic uh, search scope. I'm trying to think of a good example, but. Um, but it, you know, a lot of times, if you know you know what site it's on, but you can't find it on their site because the site that you're interested in, their their search, it doesn't work very well. Um, or again, if you just want to search for something very quickly, like so, for example, there's a couple of websites I like to reference uh, when I when I come across uh, like some odd verse in the Bible, for example. There's a couple of sites that come off the mind that I that I know are good. Like one is called GraceBibleStudies.org. One is uh, faithalone.org. Another one is uh, gracegospelpress.org. Uh, Dean Bible Studies. Um, there, there's there's like five or six or probably 10 websites I know that will have good information about a particular verse. Like people I trust that I uh, have the right gospel and have a particular strength in eschatology or whatever aspect of scripture. And so, and but this works for anything, anything you're searching the internet for. One thing you can do that a lot of people don't know about is, um, so for example, if I want to look up, look up um, the word, uh, obviously peanut butter, for example, uh, peanut butter. Well, that's very broad in scope. So if I, if I just search on that, it's going to bring that back a ton of results. But if I want to know um, a certain, you know, peanut butter, uh, uh, um, what's a good site uh, uh, for Food. Well, let me just, I'll think it's okay. John, John 3.16. I just do that. John 3.16. And I want to limit the scope of that su- that search to a certain site. I could use the site delimiter. So you can type in John 3.16, for example, put a space, and then type the word site, like S-I-T-E, colon, and then um, uh, Grace Bible Studies, for example, is what I'll, I'll type in. So I'm limiting my search to... A, a specific um, uh, website. So, and, and so uh, if I type that in now, I'm getting just the results from that website that contain John 316. And so a lot of times I'll do that. If I'm looking for a difficult verse, for example, um, I'll, I'll use that site uh, signifier. So that I'm, I'm limiting the scope of my search for, to a particular site. And I'll just iterate through a bunch of websites that I know that are good, that have uh, good information about Bible verses. Um, so I can do, you know, gotquestions.org. I don't, I don't use that too much, but I'm just getting that as an example. Um, again, you're not searching the whole web. You're just searching that one site. So, uh, again, it's just easy for narrowing down. You know, when you're trying to find a needle in a haystack, uh, you know, the, 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 the internet is a pretty big haystack. So this limits it uh, to a, a certain website. And so it's, it's useful for that purpose. Uh, I use it all the time. I use it every day. Uh so hopefully some people find that helpful. Again, a lot of times it's useful for two reasons. One is you want to search a bunch of web specific websites at once or the website that you want to go to, their their built-in web search or their site search is garbage, which is not which is very common. You know, you can't find something mm-hmm. on a website. Uh, you can use a third party to find it but limit it to that to that website if that makes any sense. Okay, so then just by taking the topic you're interested in did I have this right? Do I have this right? And you put it in a colon after you type in the topic and yeah, then so what a particular website or the subtopic? Exactly. Correct. Like, so again, uh, I, I chose, I have job 316 space site colon got questions.org. So I'm only searching got questions.org for, for all the pages that contain John 316. Okay. But I, again, I don't think Got Questions is a, a great website. I don't use it very much. But there are, I have like 10 other websites that I do use all the time. Um, and I just substitute those in and uh, able to find, you know, get answers pretty quickly. Okay. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Okay. You know, that's going to help me in my searching because I, I hate when I do a search for something, even though I the topic very specific and I still get a bunch of junk <laughs> that I'm 
just not even interested in or is unrelated. Right. Yeah, that's very frustrating. I appreciate that. Thank you. Sister Angel, are you yes. there? Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. Kind of. Did you remember um, your I, helpful tip? Uh, not quite. I, I'm frustrated <laughs> by that because I was really, I was so excited about last week that I, I wanted to give to you and now I can't remember it. But I do have another okay. similar one that um that I just wanted to talk about because I don't, you know, uh, we, we've talked about before, I think, dandelion, right? But there's another mm -hmm. weed. Uh, I've mentioned it before, but I don't think I've really gone into it. That's like everywhere. It's prolific. It's it's the one you see other than dandelion. And it's uh, it's called plantain. And um, it's spelled like a like plant, you know, like a, like the, the fruit plantain. But it's it's not a fruit. It's just like this little uh, green weed. And normally it'll it'll have like big um, kind of like paddle shape. I'm on the phone. I'm, uh, okay, I'm on the phone. I'll be right there, Lucy. Um, um, it's got big paddle-shaped leaves, or th there's also a narrow leaf form of it. And they're kind of like, they have like long uh, uh, vertical ribs uh, down the middle. If you Google it, you'll see plantain weed. You'll recognize it right away. It's very annoying. But it's um, an incredibly potent uh, source of vitamins. And so quite like, like dandelion, which is also packed with just incredible properties, Plantain is uh, is just as abundant, but it's also like, for instance, you know, when, when whenever I was uh, whenever I'm feeding um, animals uh, like chickens or rabbits, um, I always try to give them a lot of that because it's got incredible anti-cancer properties. Um, it's also something that if you get a bug bite um, and you're outside, you can uh, chew it up and put the, you know, it doesn't have a bad taste really. I mean slightly bitter nothing it's like pretty similar to dandelion and you can actually just put it right on top of the bug bite and it takes the itch away right away uh, and it's really great also for wounds and stuff I know um my husband he's made um ointments out of it before and he's also made um tinctures when he was into that he would make uh tinctures out of plantain and dandelion specifically um and it's really great like i said for preventing cancer also you know there's been some studies about it treating cancer um uh, and i'm not sure if it's like the high vitamin c content or what it is about plantain but it's, it has um a, a heavy uh link to actually being able to treat a lot of different uh diseases and infections like i know um that ointment that he made i used it for everything anytime the kids got a boo-boo instead of using neosporin or anything, I would use that plantain and it was wonderful. And especially for the, the anti-itching properties that it has. But um, it's just a, another one of these uh, 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 weeds that we see everywhere. They're, they're omnipresent and they're very difficult to get rid of. And it, I think it's funny that um, it has so many uh, incredibly beneficial uh, properties to it that we, you know, people don't even know about I, I would imagine it's a very good source of nutrition in a pinch because of all of the the nutrients that it has but also just the fact that um like i i would imagine if <laughs> if you were to eat some every day or even if you know depending on the type of animals you have obviously not every animal will eat greens but i know like with my chickens i try to make sure that i provide it in heavy quantities to prevent disease in them and i give even I, I even give it to my neighbor's chickens next door because they don't actually get to get outside. So whenever I'm weeding my garden and stuff, I will, I, I will put it in their, uh, in their run because it, it's just such a shame that, um, and they're, and they're rabbits too, because it makes me feel so bad when I see they keep rabbits for the manure, but the rabbits are just in these, you know, tiny little cages their whole life, you know, in the, they collect the poop underneath and it's just heartbreaking for me. So I will sneak, uh, sneak different uh, treats from the yard out into the, into the bunny cage. Cause I also know it will prevent disease, but um, yeah, I just, I, I wanted to point people in that direction. Cause it's one thing I, I've not heard many people talk about is plantain. I've heard them talk about dandelion. People are aware of that, but um, there's something that's just as prolific everywhere I've ever been. Um, that's, uh, you know, uh, equally, if not more, nutritious and uh, beneficial and it's really important to know these things especially with the way things are looking these days in terms of the economy I mean 
Uh, I think I think I'm no, I'm normally not the type who fears any type of economic collapse because I I generally don't believe the economy is real anymore. So like I think if it <laughs> if it was just going to collapse as a natural result of just all of the ridiculous things um, the uh, financial system has done, <laughs> I think it would have collapsed already. But it seems as though they have some way of keeping it afloat artificially and that really if it crashed it's because they want it to crash but at this point it almost seems like they might want it to crash um with a lot of the things that are going on and the inflation is it's already out of control i know for for us our grocery prices have, have already gone up considerably and at first i thought maybe i was just uh, like man am i just spending out of control here like i'm <laughs> i'm going to the grocery store and i can't seem to spend less than four hundred dollars every time i do it um and uh and then i realized i looked into it and prices have gone up uh, all over the place uh, in, you know, all types of different, you know, uh, basic everyday products. So there's also been a lot of shortages. I've noticed more and more shortages, things that just, you know, almost every time I go to the store, there's something that was always there that's not there. I'm having a really hard time finding, which I think is a little bit suspicious, distilled water. I don't know about you guys, but um, that used to be like the easiest water to find because nobody drinks it, even though it's the best water to drink. And mm -hmm. suddenly now I'm finding like they're out of it everywhere I look all the time, which, you know, of course I have my suspicions about that, but like, oh, really, did, did too many people catch on to how good distilled water is for you? And now they're going to make it hard to get because uh, it was also the cheapest water. But so with all these shortages and stuff, I think it's, um, I don't know, I just have, I, it might, it might be nothing, but I, I'm starting to have a, a slight concern about, um, uh, you know, food shortages and just people, um, uh, if they, you know, the dollar value crashes too much, um, you know, and who knows, who knows now we're in such an upside down world now, uh, anything's possible. I, you know, a few years ago, I would have, I would have had a normalcy bias to say that, you know, people were overreacting and panicking, but now, you know, I really don't know. They've pulled this COVID stunt. So, you know, really, uh, I, nothing would surprise me. So I think it's important for people to start looking into stuff in their, you know, in their natural environment, um, you know, under learning about foraging, of course, learning about gardening is a, is a really, uh, really helpful thing. But um, one of the, one of the, you know, most important things I think is when you, when you actually know what to forage for yourself, you know, aside from just growing uh, crops and stuff. It's really, there's a lot of stuff that I know of that um, I wouldn't have to even grow myself that I would just have access to in the woods. That would be, you know, some things that are so medicinal, it, you know, it, it makes going to the doctor unnecessary for a lot of different infections and stuff. So um, I think, uh, you know, I'm trying to focus on that more. There's a, there's some really good books on these things too. Things that the pioneers and, you know, just really our, our forefathers knew. And we're able to, you know, it's just basic skills and uh, knowledge of their environment that kept them alive through much harsher times than than we've seen. Um, and I think we're all kind of sitting ducks for, mm. you know, I, I've heard I've heard that if a specific highway in Cal, I forget what the what the highway is, but there's a there's a highway in California that if it were to shut down for like a few days. People claim at least that like 10,000 people could die, I guess, from like, you know, especially people that depend on different medical services and supplies. But, you know, we're in a very vulnerable position right now. So um, I mm -hmm. hope everybody will look into more things about foraging and, of course, gardening and stuff. But mm -hmm. I, I know less about gardening than I do about foraging. So mm. at least Thank gardening you, when it comes to actually growing crops, that's that's harder. It's a lot harder than the gardening I do, which is like ornamental. So. Oh yeah. I had Brent, uh, Ben, while you were talking, bring up an article about plantain weed. It's spelled awesome. just like the fruit, but it's not, it's not the fruit. It's actually a no. weed. Yeah. And, well, yeah, it should be like familiar. I said about that, they, how, who, but the devil <laughs> would call something that's a food or medicinal a weed. But anyway, you know, uh, only right. only the devil's mindset would call something the Lord made this beneficial for humanity a weed. But anyway, and the more you look into it, the more you find like specifically the things we know of as weeds, 
you know, uh, are, right. are super healthy. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like not even just like the ones that are lesser known, but like <laughs> specifically the things that grow in the highest abundance, the most yes. stubbornly are, yes. are, are actually really like life-saving plants. And it's almost, I, you know, God had to have a, have a reason for that. I'm sure that's why he did it. Oh yeah. You know? <laughs> no, no doubt. That's what I'm saying. In our so, decadence, we totally disregarded it. You know, <laughs> we would have yeah. appreciated it. Oh, yeah, that's true. And people should look into foraging and learn how to do some and learn what's right there in your own area. Yeah, even in in cities and metropolises, there's oh, yeah, plants there's food. everywhere. Yeah, plants are everywhere. And if you learn which ones are actually medicinal and or food, you know, it could be the difference one day between God forbid life and death. Um, but it also keep you from panicking because you'll know when other people are panicking, you'll know what's what. So, you know, it's a good idea to go ahead and learn about. There's all kind of videos right here on YouTube for free that you can learn about foraging and, and, and how to recognize plants. And it might be good Darn. to get yourself a, a book. What happened? I just remember what I was going to say. I'll talk That's about okay. next week. I was going to recommend people get into growing bamboo. Uh, that's oh. why, because yeah, yeah, it's a, a it, that's a that's a foraging issue too, because you can eat it, but it's also incredibly useful in a million different ways. And I've been growing it, and it's like the most awesome thing ever. So, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> cool. I want to know how to grow yeah. it. I definitely want to hear you talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's awesome. It's like it's it's proof of God right there. The, the right. just the bamboo, yeah. the uses that it has, and the fact that that I'll talk about it later, but it's mm -hmm. just really like he made it for us for, for the exact purposes <laughs> for you know, how else humanity. you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause it's like a, a pole, you know, mm -hmm. an extremely strong pole and you don't have to um, use like all that expensive wood milling stuff to get it that way. Right. And there's a lot of things like that in nature that God gave us like, like hemp, for example, uh, oh, yeah. the, there's a million one things you could do with hemp, and what they do with it, oh, just about basically outlawed it in this country, um, oh, because yeah. you can make fuel and clothing and, with it. Yes, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so they outlawed it. Yeah, gee, no wonder because people with their own ingenuity would have discovered all the different things you could do with it, and it was it was almost seemed like limitless, and with the stuff yeah. that you could do with it. Kind of crazy. <laughs> and bamboo's getting that way too. They're making like fine linens out of it and all kinds <laughs> of stuff. And and it's funny because it, it grows once you get it going, it's it grows like prolifically. I mean, it takes a it it, it grows underground for the first, first couple of years, you know, the root system, you think it's not doing anything, and then it just starts go going everywhere and it's such a blessing. I mean, there's just no limit to the things you can use those that it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. So, I do too. Um, I like I, I like it a lot. I do. Yeah, I'm tacky like that. I like make my shower. All my 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 uh it's, my it's uh, funny. curtain rods are bamboo. <laughs> it's funny that you you're talking about bamboo because I just ordered some. Um, we have a a fence here in the backyard where the neighbors can look through and see very easily, you know, two or three houses down from us behind us, and. We had been putting tarps up, but I got sick of looking at the stupid tarps and then they don't last right. that long. So I went and bought a, a bamboo screen and it looks yep. so pretty. That's why I went, I got it and they have yeah. different colors. They have dark, they have light. So I bought it and I can't wait for it to arrive because it was actually was like, it's like $59. I think it was for 16 feet by 6.6 .6 feet. So it's tall enough that they're not going to be able to see in and wide enough that it's going to cover that whole back fence because it's it's a, one of those iron uh, wrought iron gate type fences that open in and, and out. And right. it's going to block that and it's going to look so pretty on top of it. Oh, yeah. And and that's the thing, too, is um I've been uh, I just planted some because I, I have two different types of bamboo I'm growing. I live up in the cold. So there, but there's cold hardy bamboo. I don't think people realize there's a lot of bamboo that will grow. We have native bamboo in America called river cane. I have that. And I also have yellow groove. And um, I got sick of my chicken area. Be, I mean, it's not too bad, but it's, you know, it's kind of like if you can see into the run sometimes, you know, if I haven't cleaned it in a while, it just, you know, it just doesn't look good. Chickens are messy. So I was tired of people being able to see that in my yard. So I, mm -hmm. I plant, I took some of the bamboo divisions that are growing in, 
less than ideal places in the front yard. <laughs> and I and I planted them along that fence line. And if you actually look online, you can see where people make just uh, amazing living privacy fences with mm-hmm. bamboo. And it's, uh, you know, and then, yeah, you can harvest it. You can cut the, you can cut the canes down and use them for, for all types of stuff. If you, especially if, you know, if you have enough land, which we only have a couple acres, but that's still plenty to grow a crazy amount of bamboo. And um, you can sell it too. That's mm-hmm. like the biggest thing. It's like, it's actually um, a lucrative thing. Cause you can, you know, you can, I was seeing a 10 gallon pot of it going for like 75 to a hundred dollars. Um, and, uh, that's, that's like a 10 gallon pot is, is real small. Like I can, I can, I can make that with just, uh, a couple divisions, you know, from what I have growing. So, um, you know, that, and just selling plants in general right now is very lucrative online. So, uh, but I'll talk about that a little bit more next week. Cause I, that's a really good tip for people that like gardening and stuff, um, and want to make money on the side is, is actually looking into growing stuff that you can sell online because it's it's a booming industry a lot of people don't realize there we go all right next week we're going to hear your report on bamboo thank you angel Mm -hmm. appreciate that sweetie uh (laughs) all right mr what's your name jordan i understand that you have a helpful tip for us this evening oh i sure do and it comes with a brief story so Once upon a time, at the beginning of the week, a wasp found its way into my bedroom. And you're not allowed to spoil this, Lisa. I'm not going to say a word. I'm just going to laugh. Okay. So, um, and Victoria can't say anything in the chat either. So, basically, so this wasp makes its way into my bedroom some way, somehow. And um, this is my first summer back in Pennsylvania, so I wasn't used to really dealing with wasp. Um, Now, here's the thing. I know I hide it very well, but in my everyday life, I'm somewhat dramatic about everything. And what most people would take maybe five minutes to take care of, I usually spend a couple days on and usually have to have uh, quite the narrative to go with it, as you'll see in just a moment. So... This wasp makes its way into my bedroom. And so naturally, I get myself into a corner by the door in case I need to make a quick escape. I um, have a rolled up folder because I didn't, I mean, I don't live in ancient times. So, like, I don't have a newspaper or magazine or anything like that around. And I had a pillow as a shield and I had my shirt rolled up like a cannonball. So I was ready to go to war with this thing. So I just kept my eyes on it the whole time, just like trying to localize it, make sure I did not lose visual. And boy, I'll tell you what, there aren't even pro baseball players that can aim like I did. I was shocked how well I aimed. So I threw my shirt at it and like, bam, hit it, gone. I was like, man, I'm so good at this. So I'm like, I don't even know where it went, but that's fine. That's fine. I'm just going to go in bed because game over. I won. So I, I crawl over to my bed. I'm relaxing. And then, I don't know, within 30 minutes, this wasp is up again. And this time, he, I, 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 I didn't have my quick escape route. So I started freaking out. So I threw a pillow because, you know, I know Lisa disagrees with me on this, but I have um, a scientific research done by a very credible internet (laughs) article that says wasp can remember a person's face. So (laughs) I know this wasp knew what I did and it came for me. So what I did was I threw a pillow And I have an entertainment center in my bedroom. So if you guys can, if you guys know how the entertainment center is, there's a cupboard on the one side, then there's like this little gap and then a cupboard on the other. So somehow my perfect aim got it twice. And so the pillow made its way into this crevice. And I'm like, well, this is perfect. Like it's stuck there. So what I did was I threw my entire bedding 
on top of it. Um, I then went over to my clothes and started throwing all my clothes on top of it. So I trapped this thing in there. I started putting boxes, heavy objects, everything like that. And then I Googled how long does a wasp live for? And it was about a week. And so I was like, like without food or water, I was like, perfect. So I'll just wear the same outfit and um, sleep with no bedding for a week. And then I'll check to make sure it's dead. And so... Uh, that was the plan the whole time. Well, the night before, I was talking to Sister Victoria, and I was like, I can't find my bedroom fan. And this wasp was so smart that, and I know, I, I, I refuse. I absolutely refuse to admit that I was dumb at all in this scenario. So the wasp was just super smart. So when I tell you I threw my fan at my entertainment center with my TV on it, um, it got buried with all of that. So I actually had to move stuff to get my fan or I was going to die of heat exhaustion. Like this wasp was genius. Well, somehow when I moved the fan, it left a way for the wasp to come out. Well, the next morning, Lisa called because I just naturally woke up in the morning and all of a sudden I start here now. Anyone else in the room would have heard just like a regular buzz. But I was like hearing Jordan, Jordan. Jordan. So I was like, oh my gosh. And like Lisa knows, like I, I did not. And you know what? I don't care. I don't need to prove myself to be a man. I did not. I, I am perfectly a okay with not seeming like a man. But this thing was mad. Like it literally was seeking me out. It was on, you know, it was on a seek and destroy mission. So this is where my helpful tip comes in because this isn't what I heard. And we're going to get there in a minute. But Lisa shared a tip that if you take, what is it, one or two tablespoons of Dawn dish soap? About two teaspoons to two about te 16 ounces. Okay, and this is not what I heard. Keep this in mind. You put that <laughs> in with a water bottle and you spray the wasp and it will be dead in five minutes. That's not what I heard. She, uh, she said, and this is honestly on Lisa a little. She should have stayed on the phone with me knowing that I was in a frazzled state of mind. What I heard was She's go down. Me. <laughs> what I heard was go downstairs and, um, oh, by the way, the, the rest of the story panned out today, Lisa, when I told you about what I dropped down the sink. So I'll touch on that in a minute, too. So. <laughs> What I heard was go downstairs and take the Dawn dish soap that's half full, fill the other half with water, and then spray it out using that. So that's what I heard. That's, and, of course, that's what you heard, dear. You're a man, but go ahead. <laughs> and so, and in the meantime, um, I dropped the cap down the drain. And I was like, oh, no. And remember, I told you that, Lisa? Well, I, I didn't think it was going to be an issue until today. <laughs> you, uh, you, wait, why would you not think dropping a cap down the sink would not be an issue? I really hope my mom's not listening to this. Because, oh my goodness. <laughs> because I thought, like, I don't know. It, it, the, the sink was working the last two days. But today... Mm -mm. It busted open water all over the kitchen floor. Oh, oh, and then I had to sit. I, I mean, as a Christian, I couldn't lie. So I just had to sit there and act brand new. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Is that water? <laughs> so, But the whole time I'm like, yo, that did. Yeah. So but anyway, getting back to the point of the story. So I get into my bedroom and I localize the wasp yet again. I should have sent a picture to Ben ahead of time so you guys could see this thing. It was did it not it look nasty? Big. Yeah. It was nasty looking and it was big. Yeah. So it was uh, Victoria thinks it was a murder hornet. So that's I that I I'm kind of building my resume on things that I've survived in 2020, so I'd love to put that one on there too, but so I get my room and I see it and me being the graceful person that I am, I just go all out and I squeeze it. Well, so it goes all the way on my ceiling. So my ceiling now has a Dawn dish show streak on it. And the thing is, it starts flying over my laptop. Do you think that's going to stop me? No. So Dawn dish soap all over my bed, 
all over my laptop. It starts mm -hmm. going over the electrical outlets. You think that stops me? <laughs> nope. All over the electrical outlets. Uh, well, like, what is this thing called? A strip plug? Some, I don't know what it's called. I'm so but... happy you didn't burn your mother's house down. <laughs> There's twice that I almost did that when I was younger, but that's a different day. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so all over the place. Um, then it finally landed, but it landed on my bed. So I lunge on my bed as if this is the final scene in a zombie apocalypse movie. And I'm just like smashing that thing as if it's like, no, die, die, die. So I like smash that thing. It's still like crawling and I'm like squirting out every last bit of Dawn just so I'm like, why won't it die? It's like crawling towards my pillows. Well, eventually stop crawling. It did die. Um, but um, my mouse pad no longer works because apparently soaking your laptop with Dawn dish soap just but it's all right because I had an external mic and I won. So my helpful tip is keep Dawn dish soap nearby and um, don't be afraid to sacrifice your masculinity. Not sponsored, by the way. Not uh, sponsored. No, you know, when I told my mother the story. My mother said, you didn't explain it to him step by step. I said, exactly. well, mother, I didn't think I would have to. She said, of course you do, dear. It's a man. She so, knew me better than you. That's kind of. I didn't realize I'd have to say, okay, Jordan, go down to the kitchen. Get the Dawn dish soap. Get yourself a water spray bottle. Fill up the water spray bottle. Take the cap off of the Dawn dish soap. If it falls I down the sink, the by the way. <laughs> Yeah, but if it falls down the sink, by the way, don't leave it in the sink because that could create a disaster. And then put two teaspoons in the water bottle. Put the cap back on both bottles. Shake up the bottle with the water in the Dawn dish soap. Take that back upstairs and spray, but avoiding electrical outlets and anything electrical, the bug. And then wait five minutes for the dye. I didn't know I was going to have to say all that, but I forgot I was talking to now. You know why? I call him a toddler. So... He just demonstrated why I tease him about his age. This is, uh, this was not good, Jordan. Then I hope your mother's not mad at me that you got dish soap all over your room, messed up your computer and or your mouse pad and oh, possibly I microphone. I am like the Protestant Reformation in my own house, causing all sorts of divisions. Like my mm -hmm. mom, like I was asleep when this was happening, but apparently, like my mom got mad at my stepdad. It's like you used all the soap. And he's like, no, I didn't. She's like, you're lying. And I was asleep during the whole thing. I was like, oh, man. How so, convenient. You were asleep. You didn't know that you caused an argument between your mother and your stepfather. I'm like, oh. Mm -hmm. And then she, then she's like, um, because she knows I'm not doing dishes. So <laughs> I'm not even on the suspect list. And now you have a reason not to because there's no dish soap. <laughs> yeah. Well, I told her, I was like, oh, yeah, no, that was me. And she's like, well, bring it down. Like, why do you have dish soap in your room? I was like, it was for a wash trap. And she's like, well, bring it down. I'm like, oh, it's gone, though. She's like, it, it, well, she, she's like, it was like almost a full bottle. And I was like, what? <laughs> Are you sure? I feel like there was only a little bit left. Like, I went through the rest of it. Georgian's mom, I bear no responsibility for it. I <laughs> told this young man two teaspoons, not the whole bottle. I don't know how that extrapolated into the whole bottle. So, Jordan, you on your own. But the wasp is dead. The wasp is dead. Yes, that's good news. It's a good thing. It was a big wasp, though. That thing looked like it was about it like was three nasty. inches in length. It was pretty big. No, see, here's the thing. I'm not one to exaggerate at all. So when I tell you that it had a four foot wingspan, it was absolutely <laughs> ginormous. Okay. I saw a picture of it. Picture of it. He sent it to me. It did not have a four foot wingspan, but I should have stood big. next to it so you could see the comparison. <laughs> okay. We're getting to my tip now. I'm going to put a link in. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan, for that amazing but disturbing and troublesome story. Now, let's go over here to <laughs> – I'm going to put the, the link for this website. It's a government website, by the way. Um, 
It's called NHTSA. I think that's how they pronounce it. It is nhtsa.gov forward slash recalls. And my tip is something that should help anyone, whether you drive, don't drive, because you can share this with somebody who owns a car. It can be a late model car as in, in brand new or a few years old. Really kind of doesn't matter. You can go look and see because these safety recalls is what this is about for vehicles. Uh, they, As far as I have heard now, I'd have to read all these mice type things on here. Um, yeah, well, they, okay, it's within 15 calendar years of the age of the vehicle. So if you have a vehicle that's 15 years old or less, uh, this would apply. And you can go in here and you type in your VIN number, which would, of course, be located on your registration and or most insurance cards. I think that I think they include the whole VIN number. It may depend on the insurance company. But you just find your VIN number and you type that in here on the website on the page. Ben, if you could go ahead and display this uh, website, that'd be great. And scroll down, let them see what I'm talking about. There's a place to type in the 17 character VIN number. And then, uh, thank you, Ben. And then it'll tell you what safety recalls uh, are on the vehicle. Now, I understand that under, I don't know if it applies to every state, so please do your own research, that brand new cars, the dealerships, are supposed to make sure that that's repaired before they sell you the car. Okay? But on used cars, this does not apply. There can be a safety recall and they can still sell you the car without the repair having been done. But that's not too much to worry about as long as it's not a safety uh, recall where they you probably wouldn't even want to roll it off the lot. So you want to do your own research on that, but you could get the VIN number before you buy the car and check and see what safety recalls are on it determine whether or not you should even put, put the car on the road before you go down the road. A lot of people don't even know this. Um, I had a car, for example, that I bought used that had a uh, brake light issue. The, the taillights didn't come on when you hit the brake. There was a switch in there that went bad, and it was a recall. What well, the good news for me was, because I know about this kind of stuff, there's two ways you can do it. You can come to a website like this and find out what it is, and then call the dealership and say, hey, there's a recall on this car. I'd like to schedule a uh, time that I can come in and get this repaired because the dealership has to fix it for free. This is the law. So you can call the dealership and find out if there are any uh, repairs that are needed on your car. They'll check for you and they'll let you know. And they can also tell you whether or not it's ever been done to that vehicle. So you can call the dealership, give them the VIN number, and they can say, oh, it's in our computer that that repair was done on this day at this particular dealership. They'll tell you. So you'll know it's already taken care of if it's been taken care of. But if it hasn't, you can schedule an appointment with them because usually they might have to order the part for it. And you wait a couple of days and it'll come in and you can take it in and they have to fix it for free. I've done this twice on the car. Well, once. Actually, it was once, but it was two repairs that were safety recalls. So they did them both at the same time. So I wanted to let you know about this because this is uh, – a way to save some money for something that if you didn't know about this, you'd go spend money on it. If you went to other than a dealership, the dealership should catch and go, hey, that's that's a part of a safety recall. We'll take care of that for you. But if you went to somebody else other than the dealership, they 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 have nothing to do with this. So <laughs> they just go charge you the money to fix it. If they don't know about this or don't care to tell you about this, and you might spend money that you didn't need to spend. So uh, I wanted to let you know about this. There's the website. Ben has scrolled so beautifully for us to show you. This is a .gov website. This is by law. It's a part of that whole lemon law thing type thing where the dealerships, because this was, I think it was back in the 70s this happened, where there were lawsuits that were brought, where cars were breaking down on stuff, and the dealerships were going, ah, you know, the the, the uh, manufacturers, rather, were going, we, we don't have nothing to do with that. We're not going to. Take care, and the government said, "Oh no, no, no! You're gonna take care of this. These are safety issues." And so this became law where they have to fix it if it's a safety-related issue. So you need to uh, be aware of this. Let your family know because they may not know. Anybody who owns a car that's 
15 year calendar years or less, this applies. Okay. If it hasn't been done, that they can take it in and, and have the dealership correct the problem. No charge to them. So I thought you should know about it. All right. That's my tip for the evening. <laughs> Moving right along. I think we did pretty good this evening because last week it was kind of funny. Ben texted me because, like I said, nothing went like I had planned last week. And he texted me, I think it was the next, no, during the week. And he said, it's funny because when you close the broadcast, you were closing the broadcast trying to say goodnight to everybody. And we ended up talking another hour. I started laughing. I said, yeah, it was all your fault, too. The man, a few words. You kept us talking for another hour. <laughs> so where are we right now? Oh, trivia. Uh I was actually driving, dragging my feet on this because this does not bring out the best in our friend Jordan. Well, I actually do because <laughs> I do want to be able to address this issue on camera and issue a public apology just because I've had people reach out to me and let me know that I've come across very prideful when I posted clips in the what I thought was supposed to be a funny video, it got more thumbs down than I've ever received on my channel before. So if you don't <laughs> mind, I would like to um, take the floor, hop on camera for just a minute so I can issue an apology to everyone. Okay. The floor. Okay. So... Did, did, did you get that worked out where he can appear on camera? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm so eager to see what he wants to show us. Um, for some reason, my camera will not come on. Give me one. I wonder more. if it had anything to do with the Dawn dish soap. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me do this. Well, there for we those go. of you who don't know, <laughs> oh, what? What happened? So can, can they see this, Ben? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. A demonstration of humility. <laughs> so <laughs> I just wanna apologize because, <laughs> because I know that you guys think that I <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> they broke my character. I was all set with this speech. I know that <laughs> I came off prideful after my extraordinary victory a couple weeks ago. So I just want to take this moment so real quick. <laughs> I, just, I want to <laughs> apologize to everybody who saw my behavior and was so utterly offended that they took it upon themselves to dislike my video and also send me um, private messages letting me know that I am a man of pride. I am willing to humble myself and learn from it. I apologize to everyone in Lisa's chat who last week, if we got to trivia, I was planning on timing out for 300 seconds so I could answer <laughs> first. I apologize to you, Lisa, for having you on several times to talk about how dishonest and corrupt you are. Um, <laughs> that is better <laughs> left in the dark. Angel, I apologize for exposing your unborn child and budgies to my toxic behavior that personally came to you, and I'm willing to pay for any therapy bills that your child may endure as a result of And me. the budgies. Yeah, berating Budgie, you in the way I did. They're still reeling from it, honestly. Okay. I just hold them and you know rock them to sleep many times over this. So. They didn't know Let the world know. was so ugly until they saw your attitude, Jordan. Budgies are yes, very innocent I'm, creatures. Yeah, I heard your budgies I'm, can eat for a whole week after that. Yeah, that's I'm, a miracle they're still alive. Yeah. Yeah, uh, let me know if they, you find a good bird therapist. I am willing to um, see. But as for Ben, um, nothing trivia related, but private envy. I do apologize for 
envying your wealth of knowledge in the fact that you look younger than me. Um, so there's <laughs> always been that hidden um, enviness. So I apologize for that. So now that it's all out in the open, I just hope we can proceed tonight in a manner of humility. And I promise to conduct myself as a way a Christian should be. And in no way do I think that trivia should be a time of laughter and fun. I just want to let everybody know who reached out to me and let me know that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Jordan. <laughs> um, I hope I that therapy, that's... Therapy. I would have therapy <laughs> bills after that. <laughs> I got to uh, that from my mind. <laughs> I would think so, too. I think I'm going to have nightmares, and I don't usually get nightmares, so... <laughs> Jordan, um, sweetie, I, I don't think that the costume is just right for you. I don't, I don't think what, the what costume. Yeah, what the costume. costume. <laughs> the, yes, Angel, do not feed. Don't feed into his delusion. Now you know better than. Okay, so, uh, Jordan. Okay, you have on a crown, and you have on what do they call those? They're not capes. What is that called? Uh, a cloak. No, it's funny because. Oh. My mom laughed at me when I went to put it on yesterday because, like, legitimately, the crown would not fit my head. <laughs> like, it was just a really cruel irony. Mm -hmm. Is that because you just naturally have a big toboggan, or is it because it swole to that point? I think I just got an extra small size. Mm -hmm. I think your toboggan swole behind <laughs> the pride. Cause, that cause you were just apologizing a for. Tight too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, yeah, Jordan. He, he answered a whole one question more <laughs> uh, than we did. I don't know if you guys understand <laughs> the level of accomplishment he, he achieved, but I think I think he's due a little bit of uh, a little bit of pride after that. I mean, sweeping victory. I, yeah. You know, I thought so too, but I don't know. Like, I, I, I'll have to show you guys the messages. I've literally had someone reach out to me and say, "Dude, you're so full of pride. You didn't even know the Roman and the Holy Roman Empire and the Roman Empire were different." I was like, "I didn't know we got a question about the Roman Empire, but okay, thanks for letting <laughs> me know." <laughs> <laughs> well, there are a lot of people who argue that uh, they're not different at all. It just took on a religious uh, front. And that it still runs the rules of the world. That's why they have the phrase, all road, uh, roads lead to Rome. But we'll argue about that another night. <laughs> I hope that costume wasn't just laying around in your closet, by the way. No, I actually had to buy this. Special order, <laughs> from what I hear. I had it Amazon Prime and everything. But oh. next day. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Not that I'm planning on losing it tonight, but we mm -hmm. could do, like, you know how they did in, like, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants? Like, we could just send this around to whoever wins. <laughs> send it around to whoever wins. I have a feeling you're not going to ever let anyone else win, Jordan. No. You'll be a legend in your own mind. Um, I, I don't know. I'm working on this humility thing. I can't really comment. Okay. Everybody, we're going to encourage Jordan to take a deep, long look at himself, examine himself, and begin to work on his much needful, <laughs> his much needful, I don't know, self-examination about being prideful. I don't, now Jordan, are you serious? People really thought that that was Oh, like I'm, serious? They didn't get that we were all just I'm having fun. Dead serious. <laughs> wow, that's sad. I said, what are, are these people baptized in lemon juice or something? I mean, what happened? <laughs> I am uh. so serious. I was like, man, you all are saying not only that, but then these are like the same people with like Cheeto dust like all over their shirt, getting mad that we're like talking about their issues with pornography. They're like, how dare you? You're making me feel bad. <laughs> Sorry, I'm. <laughs> I, I am not responsible all. for that comment at all. <laughs> I'm not. I'm gonna have I to wish go back somebody on. had said that to me. <laughs> oh man, jealous. I, I did get somebody saying that we were gonna pay for every uh time we talked about something we don't know what we're talking about, and it was on that episode or something like that. What? He didn't, yeah, hey. I don't know, he didn't, yeah, he didn't specify as to what Is we Is there gonna know be a tax? 
I don't uh, every idle word I suppose is what he was referring to. But I, I mean, uh, <laughs> I can't. I don't know. I hope he wasn't talking about us railing against pornography because that would be that would be kind of funny if he thinks we're gonna pay for was that. Was that same person that said that? No, I don't know. Oh. I've oh. never never seen him before. But um, okay, he didn't uh, he didn't elaborate, which makes me wonder. Well, I mean, you know, it, <laughs> I, I I would think that if it were something he thought he could actually back up, he would have elaborated. But if we hit a nerve with the porn thing, I could see him leaving a comment oh. like that. You know, yeah, <laughs> but so well, far I haven't had anybody go. I wish somebody would come at me about that, but uh, well, alas. judgment begins first at the house of the Lord. So yeah. if you're a believer and you're messing around with the porn thing, you might want to look into figuring out how to get rid of that thing. We can talk to you about it. Uh, we've talked about it, but um, that's well, a stronghold in your life. My you issue, get rid of that thing. my issue isn't even like, yeah, okay, the porn thing, but like. The issue that I take is the fact that, like, I said this is contributing to child pornography, and their their first reaction is, you're making me feel bad. I didn't say it to make you feel comfortable, boo. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I, I don't know how... That wasn't I, on this channel, by the way. I mean, we've talked about stuff like that, but that was over on Sister Renee's channel, right, well, Jordan? Even last week we talked about it, and you told me oh, yeah, that somebody we did. commented, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, everybody's over here, like, freaking... Oh, okay, that was over here then? That happened, mm -hmm. look, I, I do so much, I just, I, I didn't, couldn't keep it track. I, right. I know we were talking about wickedness over on her channel on Thursday, on Thursday's Theological Throwdown, and I think we touched on it over there, but I didn't, I, I forgot that that was over here in the chat where somebody said that. Well, and we weren't like, I mean, I think most of us even admitted have, having dealt with it before. It wasn't even coming from a holier than thou place. It was just, no, it wasn't. hey, admit, admit it's wrong. Just admit that it, like, like, don't make excuses for yourself. Just admit that, you know, even in your own heart that it's wrong. Um, mm -hmm. Because that's really what God cares about. But when you start making excuses and justifying, that's well, when think... your heart's not really aligned with the Lord. Oh, yeah. Well, I think what Jordan was actually trying to do by pointing out that it contributes yeah. to child abuse and child abductions and all child rape, that it that would give you a strong yeah, reason why not. Yes, why not to do it. So the next time you yeah. thought about doing it, that would pop in your mind rather than and just I, gratifying I, yourself and think I, about I'm actually contributing to that. And I was yeah, very that's, that's I would, it has helped a lot of men. And I was very transparent. Yes. This wasn't a battle that I haven't had to fight in a battle I haven't been tempted to up until this day. It's not something that doesn't like still tempt me. Like I'm still dealing with those same skeletons. I was very transparent about that. So I wasn't yeah. trying to produce a thing of shame. But if you're going to sit there, like it wasn't to call anyone out. It was to make a statement for consideration of edification to the body of Christ. And if you are going to then say, Oh, you make me feel bad. Well, you should feel bad if you're going to put it out like that because you're exchanging 30 seconds of pleasure to a child's whole life. Like that's, I was not calling you out. I was saying, this is something to consider as a Christian. This is what's happening with that industry. And for you to say that, oh, you're a legalist, like, okay, well, then you're a sicko. You can't call someone a legalist when they're, they're nothing they're saying has a, a single thing to do with salvation. Right. right. No, well, nobody was saying they weren't saved. We were saying that this was not something good to do. This is deeply spiritual. It's profound in its effects on other aspects that people may not have considered, one of which was how harmful it is to not only women and men themselves are victims of it, but children and human trafficking in all forms. So, I, you know, why it would only and be about... And the games that plays in your mind in the way that they've yeah. proven the, that, it, that, that it's, it's weaponized to, like, lead you down a path that, um, you know, in, to, to increasing degeneracy in what you have to look at. Um, um, they've, you know, ha there's a strong correlation yeah. between and destroying a man or woman's ability to have intimacy with another human being in real life, uh -huh. you know, yeah. yeah, right, right, and just also, of course, the the idea of the duplicitous nature, the double life you lead, right, mm -hmm. where you know anything mm -hmm. I do in secret that I that I'd be ashamed if people knew that I did, like that. Ever since I've been saved, especially. 
bothers me, weighs on me. And, and I have uh, tried to get rid of as much of that as possible, not because I'm a legalist at all, but because it feels good to be authentic. It, that's the, I, I, I believe that, um, that that's the number, you know, number one thing that I can do, you know, uh, you know, in general to, to mm-hmm. please God is to actually have my actions and my life match my heart and my beliefs. And um, the, the worst feeling in the world is when somebody finds out that you're a fraud, essentially. That's what it feels like, you know, and, and, and I think people like just kind of have a blind spot when it comes to pornography because the world has told us that it's, that you're entitled to it. You're so entitled that's just to this. Okay and it's harmless and it's not really hurting yeah. anybody. And yeah. yeah. And here's the thing, like believers who are listening to this, I'm not saying like, Oh, you're not saved because you watch pornography. I'm not oh. saying like, if they you know, throw- we're not, yeah, they know so, we're not. There's no way to think that. They, they that's just a, that's the only thing they can say. And I'm not even angry or judging the people who are doing it because when I said it, it was specifically instructive. My frustration comes at the people who, after my presentation, say, "Oh, I'm struggling with this." What do you? Okay, let's take this for just a second. What do you mean you're struggling with it? Like you're doing everything you possibly can to quit, or you're struggling to watch ten movies a night before you have to get up for work the next morning? Like, how are we defining struggle? Mm. Right, right. And I mean, at the least you could do is actually be convicted enough not to get mad when people call it what it is. You know, right. that's something that struggles to me. Well, you know if why I'm they do that though. With something, what, why? <laughs> because it's a stronghold. There's a spiritual component to this. The spirit that has them bound, again, from the outside, and the believer can't be possessed, but that spirit that they're operating in don't like it and has to begin to argue against the argument that you put forward as a reason why to stop. And so it comes up and goes, no, 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 this is it. And it makes you feel invested because you're in agreement with that demonic entity to participate in that wicked thing. Yep. Yep. I I agree. And I mean, that's the thing is like, you know, at the very least, if you're struggling with it, you should not, I mean, (laughs) why would you, why would you lash out? You know, if I'm struggling with something that I fully recognize is wrong and that that I'm praying every day, God shows me a way to to stop doing um, because I don't even know how to want to stop. Right. Um, I'm not going to lash out at people for for rebuking that vice. You know what I mean? That's not you know what I mean? Like that's that's a that's 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 just a strange response to me because I'm going to be like, yeah, no, that's they're right. You know, (laughs) like they're right when I hear that. And it's just going to be. You know, I'll even take it as as a sign from God that He's further convicting me by the fact that I came across that conversation. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lash out, attack people. That's because it's true. their pet. They've been feeding yep. it and nurturing it, and as Ben was talking before the broadcast, growing it. And sometimes these things end up turning in, going from little, you know, puppies. I know this is not the same analogy because I'm gonna switch it to a gorilla, but it ends up becoming an 800 pound gorilla. It then went from a baby and then grown up. And now that thing has the upper hand in their life. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. so the whole, like, if anyone is struggling, they want help, feel free to reach out. But also, like, it, my intent in that was to inform you guys as to a reason why, as the body of Christ or just humans in general, we should not support it. But what does tick me off is when people then try to play victim in a situation they have no business playing victim. I will not call anyone out. I am not anyone to judge someone else's sin. I have, I was just telling Ben before you guys can go watch my testimony. I I've been stupid. I've looked at the cross and I went for a lifestyle of sin. Like I, I became the stereotypical, like, Oh, you use grace as an excuse to sin. Like I became that person. And I, it, it, really brought on so much shame and all that that's why i'm speaking out against it because i know where it can lead but look at what happens when you pursue the will of god so for you to then victimize yourself and play the card of oh who are you to make me feel bad i wasn't trying to make you feel bad i was bringing awareness to an area that obviously you weren't aware of and so in doing so and then for you to 
then shift gears and not want to take responsibility and ignore that fact just really speaks a lot about your character. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the way that people um, end up having things like this as a part of their life for years because they won't slay that dragon. Because that's going to be painful. Because part of it is going to be crucifying their own lustly fle- uh, lust, full f- uh, flesh and desires. Th- that's when you start growing as a believer. And you put yourself in subjection to the headship of Christ. And you say, look, this is not like God. And I want this out of my life. Because this is, is hindering my growth. It's messing with my relationships. It's messing with my testimony. I mean, there's just a whole list of things. Not to mention it could be blocking your prayers, different things that that these entities are there to do. And ultimately, they're to kill, steal, and destroy. Whatever that extrapolates to be, it's not a good thing. They're like parasites. So, you know, when people make excuses for stuff that they're comfortable with, that they've grown comfortable with, because they didn't uproot it when it when it just was trying to become a seed uh, taking hold and growing. They didn't snatch that thing up with the word of God. They didn't cut it out. They didn't dig it up. Then it starts to grow. And like I said, before you know it, it becomes a stronghold. And then that person is defending it, whatever it is. It doesn't just have to be porn. It could be anything. So that, that is sinful. The, the devil will use that because it's going to keep that believer from growing. It's going to keep that believer from having a strong witness about the Lord. That's that's what the, the Bible says. It, we know sin isn't a cursed thing. And Jesus described it as, can a man take fire unto his bosom and his clothes not be burned? So you playing with fire. He that that, he, that couldn't even be more descriptive. It 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 never ends well. If you try to hold on to it, you got to get rid of it. Now, we're not talking about to be saved, but it's because you're saved. Why would you want to be playing over there in the devil's kingdom? It is just that simple. There are things that are in the king. Okay, let's just put it this way, because people want to act stupid. Is pornography going to be in heaven? So then if it ain't in the kingdom. What you doing with it when you a believer? We have we have exchanged kingdoms. We are no longer in the kingdom of darkness. We have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. So we're supposed to emulate that kingdom. So you can make your excuses or whatever your pet sin is. I really don't care. But if you want to grow up in God, if you want to press on to the mark of the high calling of Christ, then there are certain things you are supposed to cut out of your life, get rid of, and get a get a handle on to throw it out the door in Jesus' name. You don't just go, oh, here, be my pet sin forever. And if that hurts your feelings, good. Like I said, there's a meme that's going to pop up here in a minute. Sorry, not sorry. I'm sorry that the truth offends you, but I'm not sorry for telling you the truth. Because I love you enough to tell you the truth. As the Bible says, I believe it's in Proverbs, faithful are the wounds of a friend. You know, I love people that love me enough, even if I might not want to hear it when they say it, to put what I call a boot in my behind when I need it. And I might not like it. I might not want to hear it right then. But after contemplation, prayer, letting the Lord minister to me about it. Like, you know what? They were right. I didn't want to hear it. My flesh. I told you the flesh is like a two year old. It wants what it wants when it wants it. But is a two year old. Is that the spirit of Christ? No, the Bible tells us that we're supposed to. When we when Paul said when I was a child, I spake as a child. And I did those childish things. But when I grew up, I became a man. I put away childish things. Well, as believers, there's times we're babes in Christ. Everybody starts out as a babe. But then we're supposed to grow up and we're supposed to put away childish things and want what you want when you want it is what children do. 
Disciplined people don't do that. So if we're admonishing you to grow in Christ, why would you have a problem with that? You could just be quiet and listen and then go ask the Lord, Lord, is, you know, is this true? Is this right? If you are studying your Bible, you know it's true and you know it's right. And and what's really funny is nobody made the person who left that comment put the comment in the comment section. Trying to defend wickedness. Defend wickedness. Now, we're not hating on them for it. If you're a believer, you wash in the blood of the lamb. But if you got something in your life that you know you're not supposed to have there, that you're feeding and you're giving place, then the Bible says neither give place to the devil. So is porn of the devil or not? So what Jesus gave you porn? I mean, this is it's just getting to the point where I'm wondering how intelligent some of these people really are, because that's not intelligent. You know, it's of the devil. Why would you defend it? See, and this is why grace believers get accused of being um, a greasy grace and sloppy agape and all that stuff. Well, I, I don't know. I'm not responsible for what other people do. But Jordan, Angel, Ben, and myself know good and darn well there are things that are becoming of Christ and there are things that are not. And we're going to tell the truth on the things that are not and the things that are. And if somebody got a problem with that, too bad. Either grow up or just don't press play over here no more. Because we're not going to suborn people having pet sins. Sin and, is an accursed thing. I'm sorry, Jordan, one second. Sin is an accursed thing. So if you want to have it like ice cream cone and lick all over it, you are inviting the demonic into your life. And if you open a door for the devil, he's coming to kill, steal, and destroy. He is not to be played with. And that's what we warn about. That's what we're talking about. We are not hating on anybody. If it makes you uncomfortable, ask yourself why you're uncomfortable. Go ahead, Jordan. Well, what my whole issue is, it's not even like the whole sin dichotomy, everything like because I the the issue I took with the whole thing, what made me mad was the person saying you made me feel bad. That is not the proper response. If you like, yes, we are justified. We are sanctified. We like all those things, the blessed assurance that we have in Jesus Christ, my imploration to the body of Christ. And this is what gets annoying about the free grace community is like, Yes, we are to rest in Jesus, but your knee-jerk reaction shouldn't be, oh, anytime we talk about sin, that makes me feel bad. What about the child that is being sold into sex trafficking? The whole idea is not that what I take issue with is not the sin itself, but the selfish intent behind the comment. So I, I, I already hear the free grace community speaking up. This is not, I'm not talking about the sin itself, I am talking about the individual's response in just really showing the selfishness of their heart. I know that, Jordan, but that's why I wanted to speak to the sin itself, because the fact that they opened the door for whatever pit sin, and I'm not just talking about this person, it could be anything. The problem is, is you don't realize that that is a weapon that has been formed against you to destroy you because sin is an accursed thing. So if you bring in an accursed thing into your life, it's not coming to be your friend. It's coming to wreak havoc. And, and this is what I'm speaking to. Because a lot of times people do not understand that. They think it's just fun. Well, the Bible says that sin is pleasurable for a season. You know why? Because then there's a price to pay. 
And just like the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. But sin itself is death. And so I don't want you to be robbed. So stop looking at it as just the fun aspect of it. Because anybody who will tell you whatever it was that they started out with when it was fun. Ask them about when it stopped being fun. Ask them about when it became a stronghold and they on their knees begging and crying before the Lord to get that thing out of their life. Ask them about the sleepless nights and the pain that they went through behind the grieving of the Holy Spirit of God. This is what I'm speaking to. Jordan has, has, has an excellent point. It's an excellent point because that shows somebody's mind is not thinking clearly to want to defend something that is possibly contributing to not only human trafficking, which is wicked, but children, children, the weakest among us that we're supposed to protect. And you're going to hear what's said and go to say, I'm going to protect my sin. I'm going to defend my sin over the child. That was very telling. Very telling. And that's they, not the same thing as resting in grace. I want to make no, that point just not. because of some of the comments I see in the chat. That is not the same thing as resting in grace. That is defending a sin that is hurting other people in feeling or rejecting the conviction that's brought on. We are allowed to talk about sin as free grace believers, especially when the life of a child is at stake. I agree. So, you know, look, uh, in, in part, a lot of these mindsets that have developed that are improper and incorrect. I, I don't know if it's because, you know, there's a whole, there's a bunch of different dynamics going on. For example, a lot of people are against church now because of all these different attack videos. And I'm not saying that some of these preachers aren't completely crazy. But that's why you have a Bible. You're supposed to compare what they say into the Bible. And if they talking crazy and doing crazy or whatever. But that doesn't, as I said, and I have a meme for that. 10,000 counterfeits do not invalidate the genuine article. There are people who will tell you there's no need for pastors. That's a lie. Why is that a lie? Because the Bible says the Lord is the one that gave some pastors and some prophets and some apostles and some evangelists and some teachers. These are appointments by the Lord. And therefore, the purpose is for the edification of the saints It's for building up a strong church. Now, what we have to do as good Bereans is make sure we don't find somebody that's crazy. Right. And make sure that they stick into the word. They're not twisting the word because context is king and all these different things. Right. But the problem is for babes. They don't even know that. So babes are always at risk. That's why more mature elders or saints of God are supposed to look out for the babes and be like, no, sweetheart, that's not right. That's error. But then they got to be willing to listen. So the dynamics are difficult, but they're not impossible. So it's just like when Jesus said, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. If, if that person is truly hungry and truly seeking, they have the spirit of God dwelling in them. They're going to listen. And they're going to hear and they're going to repent, which is change the mind. And they want to grow up in God. They're going to move on and grow up in God and not stay obeyed and not fall victim. Because remember, whenever the word is preached, whenever the word is taught, the Bible don't say after a few days, here comes Satan. It says immediately he comes to steal the word. So when that person that we're referring to defended his sin, when we were speaking the truth, Immediately, the devil rose up to block what was said. So it didn't fall on good ground and take root because the, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So he got pricked in his heart. And began to defend his sin, which shows that that was a stronghold in his life. 
because if he was submitted to Christ, his reaction would have been humility and said, this is right what they're saying. I need to check myself before I wreck myself. So uh, and get that out of his life. And then if he needs help, reach out to, to have us, um, you know, either through prayer or showing him or or uh, telling him the things that help us come out of different when we had them pet sins. So uh, and this is I really believe what Jesus is talking about when he talked about I always get them mixed up. So show me some grace on this. The beam and the moat that was in a person's eye. And I believe the beam was in the person's own eye. He said, before you go try to get the moat out of your brother's eye, get the beam out of your eye. In, in other words, God don't want no hypocrites. So before you start telling somebody else about the crap going on in their life, make sure you clean up the crap that's going on in your life. But one of the reasons is so that you can show your brother or sister in Christ from a position of power and strength as an overcomer. Because you overcame that thing, now you can tell them how to do it. So people are going to receive or reject. I don't care if we get 100,000 thumbs down on this. The truth is the truth. And as far as I'm concerned, it's just confirmation of ministry. Because the Bible says, woe unto you when all men speak well of you. So there's supposed to be some people out there ticked off. Good. If we kick in sacred cows, good. Ain't supposed to be no sacred cows in the church. So on that note, anybody else have anything to say? Ben, you was kind of silent. Do you have anything you'd like to say? No, you, you guys knocked it out. You knocked it out. Awesome. That was beautiful. Okay. Preaching. Well, praise God. Sister Angel, do you have anything you'd like to add, sweetie? Okay. She might be feeding a budgie right now. Jordan, did you have anything else yeah. you'd like to say? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Guys. Yes. Go ahead. No, I'm good. You know, you guys, you guys about covered it. Sorry, I'm, I'm in the rain trying to find the extension oh. cord for the chicken coop because the lights out. So, but I'm here. <laughs> okay, brother Jordan, do you have anything else to add? We are gonna actually try to get to trivia. <laughs> no, I'm good. Okay. Now, if some of y'all are baptized in lemon juice, that ain't my problem. You know, it is okay for believers to have fun, uh, and come together. We're not hurting anybody. It's just trivia. We're having a little fun and we tease each other a little bit. And I hope you'll understand that that's the spirit. And when we start acting silly here behind the trivia, because it's just trivia and it don't really mean anything. We're just having fun with a game. OK, so it is it's not against the law for us to have fun, is it? I mean, is the world the only one supposed to be able to have fun? I don't think so. Because we preach the gospel here every time we come together. We're talking about the Lord and his things and admonishing people and stirring people to righteousness. So I don't understand what the problem is, but hey, they want to hate, let them hate. All right, Jordan, are you going to take the crown and the, you said it's not a cape. What is it called again? A cloak. A cloak. Thank you. A cloak. Are you going to take that off and have to re-earn it or do you get to wear it? Because see, it seems like, you know, well, it's I like if it's a heavyweight champion belt. If, I'm if the you... reigning champion. I'm the, uh, 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 you're comparing me to somebody who like wears speedos and jumps around in an arena. Like, no, it's staying on. I think you're confusing like professional wrestling with boxing. Oh, because... is that where you were going? Oh, I was going with boxing. Oh, I don't know about see, the whole speedo. I heard they heavy don't wear and... in boxing. Yeah, no, like that. My brother was into that um, WWF stuff. So, like, growing up, like, that's what comes to mind when I hear the heavyweight belt. Oh, okay. All right. So, you're maintaining that you're going to actually continue to wear that. So, then if somebody beats you tonight that's here in our group, like, if Sister Angel wins, and I'm hoping she does, I can't. I'm not participating. I'm the one asking the questions. Or if Ben. Man, I'm not picking on you. If you win, are you going to mail it to them so they can wear it and appear on camera with it? Are you paying the shipping fee? I what do I you. have to do with it? <laughs> you went out and bought this stuff. So you should have to pay the shipping fee. And then if it gets mailed to somebody else, then when they get ready to send it to somebody, 
I don't they know should we're talking this about this. Like, we know it's staying here. Like, we know I'm winning. So I don't know. Like, like <laughs> these are just hypotheticals. We can talk hypotheticals all night long. Okay. All right. If you say so. First <laughs> trivia question. Now, for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, please, if you could, in the chat, put at the at sign. And then my number four, the most high Jesus. That way it highlights your answer. And I'll know you're participating. And at least if you do win, we'll give you honorable mention. Now, I'm going to start with three questions. Oh. Hopefully it's not. <laughs> hopefully it's not a tie because last week it was a tie and took us a couple of more questions. Yeah, I said Mo. To get it uh, answered and Jordan ended up. I'm still not convinced he didn't cheat, but he ended up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, no, really. We know God is watching, Jordan. So I'm a, I'm a trust. I'm gonna take you at your word that you did not cheat. Okay. This question is about cats. So, oh. so a lot of y'all out there are cat lovers. So this I may give you an cats. advantage. We'll see. This may give you an advantage over Jordan. Sorry, Jordan. I didn't know you hated cats. Uh, yeah, you did. I've told you the story about it crawling in my bed and scratching me up. Nope, that wasn't me. I didn't hear mm -hmm. that story. Yes, nope. you did. If it was me, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, figures. <laughs> okay, so question number one. What are the folds of skin on a cat's ears called? <laughs> if you're a real cat lover, you should know the answer to this. And I got to remember the chat in the stream is probably about 30 seconds or more behind us. So. I have to give them a little time to participate. So I'm going to go to you, Ben. Do you know the answer to that question? No idea. No idea. Do you want to take a stab? No idea. I'll say crinkles. <laughs> crinkles. <laughs> That's cute, man. I like that. I probably would have said something similar. <laughs> Sister Angel, you have no idea. Don't you own a cat? No. I have lots oh. of cats, but I never, <laughs> never did it come into in time of life where I needed to know what those folds were called. <laughs> uh, I know what you're talking about, though. They're weird, but I don't know what they are. <laughs> well, dogs have them, too. Yeah. There's a little yes. footnote There's here. There's just a weird little pocket that they have. Mm -hmm. Like, weird little, I, I don't know to have the exact thing I'm talking about, but there's this weird little pocket. I don't know. What right. it's for, but I was like, <laughs> what is that thing? No, okay. Yeah, no, Thank you, Angel. Kidding. Jordan, do you want to take a stab at this? I know you said you hate cats, but maybe you know. Nope. I know <laughs> nothing about cats other than they're evil. <laughs> they're, e they're evil? Oh, they're you evil. just... If do you, you think know you this? had hate before this, you got hate now. <laughs> oh, let me be very clear. I hate cats. They're also very ugly, especially the little <laughs> mole rat looking ones. But is it ironic <laughs> that every time in a child's cartoon, the cat is the villain? There's a reason for that. Mm, okay. Well, I made an argument one night. I don't think Angel liked it very much, but I said, I don't like cats in particular. Now, I hate on them. I don't run around kicking cats. I don't hate them the way Jordan said. But I perceive that this is true, that if that cat was as big as you, it would try to eat you <laughs> because the ones that are as big as us, that's what they'll try to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Angel's like, no, that's a different type of cat. I'm like, uh, I don't think so, Angel, but OK, if you say so. Well, a wild cat, but <laughs> a dog that's big enough will eat us, too. And, that, and there, a lot of dogs are big enough. I've been attacked by a dog, um, but um, I've also been around tame uh, lions and tigers who uh, were, uh, you know, I worked at the, um, at the Rose, the Rose Dallas, I forget the last name. It's a famous like, big cat uh, uh, sanctuary and they do shows. And um, there was uh, one time the, the, the lady who like founded the whole thing, she was in a big circle of uh, lions and tigers. And um, I was there, like I volunteered there. So I worked around them. And um, uh, at one point, this uh, tiger got uh, a little attitude and uh, swatted her in the butt. And as soon as the lion, the male lion saw that happen, he jumped on her and, uh, and sat on her protectively, uh, would not let anybody come near her until 
her son who he knew and trusted came to, mm-hmm. to, to take her and get her fixed up. And um, I was actually shocked to see how uh, loving and affectionate, especially the lionesses were um, mm-hmm. like I would, I would be the, I took tickets and stuff. So I, I like when people come in and right behind me was the chain leak fence and the lioness enclosure. And they would sit mm-hmm. there the whole day. Pur- like they kind of have a, 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 like, it's not really purring, but it's like purring. They do this like chortle thing, rubbing against the fence, begging for me to pet them like house cats do. Mm-hmm. And so realistically, uh, big cats, when they're tame, like any other animal, I mean, if you if you deal with a wolf that's wild, it's going to eat you if it can. So okay. it's really no different. And also, um, cats, just so you know, Jordan, were clearly invented by God to be <laughs> the perfect teddy bears okay. to sleep so, with. All right. Because Let they me are soft and Let squishy and fluffy Let's... and they purr Let me to stop sleep. You. And guess yeah. what? Their purr is known and proven to heal broken bones. So there. Okay. Oh, Thank really? You so very because much. all it does is wake me up when my roommate had a cat that would just sit there and scratch at my door, which I had to repaint, by the way. <laughs> okay, yes, that is annoying. Angel that is annoying. Knew I had a dog all do the same facts, thing. All of those wonderful facts about cats, and yet she didn't know the answer to this question. So, uh, dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what? Somebody in the chat actually got it right, and I'm gonna trust that the sister did not cheat. I Celine don't. got it right. It oh, Celine, she, I could see it. She looked it up. She looked it up with Baby Yoda. <laughs> Cutaneous marginal pouch is one name for it. The other one is Henry's pocket. Ah, uh, the tip of my tongue. I know, <laughs> mine too. I said I actually, pockets. I got it half right. You did. I said you did, they but had it, pockets. <laughs> but almost doesn't count. So I had Jordan. something else on the tip of my tongue to refer to a cat. Okay, be nice, Jordan. I am. Bring out nice, Jordan. This is okay. Oh yeah, that's right. We're working on humility tonight. Yes, we're working on humility. I'll fight you. <laughs> <laughs> I've had many cats in my life. I'll fight you. They're they're really <laughs> nice. They're they're, they're kind of in be- they're either really <laughs> nasty or they're really sweet. Okay. Not, yes. There's no in between. And I have the really sweet variety who are like dogs because I raised them from babies and they are stupid. I'm going to put the next question. Like <laughs> Here's the next question in the chat for those of you who are participating. Our next trivia question. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. We got to move this right along. We're coming up on our, our break here. Uh, on average, how long does it take food to pass through the human body? On average, how long does it take? (laughs) Let's see. It's in the chat. Okay. Did you put it at me, Jordan? 48 hours. I did. Maybe if you looked, you would see it. Okay. Look, dude. This thing is like behind a little bit. It just not wasn't instant. Okay. Uh, Hendrix said eight hours. Sorry, Hendrix. But thank you for playing. No, that's not correct. Yo. Jordan, thank you. Can you imagine having that quick stuff? (laughs) Yikes. Jordan, thank you for playing the game 48 hours, but that's not correct either. Angel, you want to take a guess? You want to take a stab at it? Not Jordan at the question. <laughs> <laughs> I know he upset you. Sorry, I'm in the rain, thing. so I had to put my po- I have to keep putting my phone away because I'm out in the rain. Oh, that's oh, all right. You can go sorry. take care of I'll your just- stuff. I'll take a, I'll take, I mean, I have no idea, but I'm just mm-hmm. going to say 12 hours. I have no idea. Uh, my yep. daughter, I think like my oldest daughter, probably like two hours. My like, gosh, she goes back in all day long. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's 12 hours. Oh, that's yeah. really good. But no, that's not correct. But thank you, uh, yeah. Ben. Do I just have a really I'll... slow system? <laughs> I'll say 36. Okay. Thank you. No, I'm going to give the chat just a couple of more seconds to try to answer and see if they get it. I wouldn't have known this one either, guys, so don't feel bad. Move through the... 80 hours, Celine said. No, not quite that long, Celine. Okay, I'm going to give the answer now. 53 hours. Okay. It says the longest part of the whole process in the large intestine wherein food can sit there for more than 40 hours depending on the person Surely other people have believed that the answer to be about 24 hours. 
but on average, it's around 53 hours. I think there's a lot of people that are in the health that would tell you that's not probably not that good. Mm. Uh, but, you know, everybody I know people are different. There's some people I know that it's within I would definitely say within even six hours of them eating full grown adults and they will, you know, have a bowel movement. So, OK, no right. time to see a doctor at that point. Why? That's not right. Did you just hear Angel say her baby eats and in two hours it's, it's out? You said a full blown adult though. Yeah, but it's what I'm saying. When you get older, that's mm. what um constipation ends up becoming a problem. It's not supposed to take that long. I don't know, man. Well, okay. We know you didn't <laughs> know because you didn't get the answer right. So oh, so far, let's try. let's see. Let's keep the record straight. Jordan is now what? Oh for two. And so has been an angel. Yes, but they don't have a crown and a, oh gosh, what is it again? A cloak. And at this rate, they won't either. <laughs> a cloak. Yes. And at this rate, um, you actually guys are going to be tied to be able to share it if you wanted to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a little crisis with the uh, chicken coop. So, don't mean to be, oh, Angel, uh, take your time. Take your time, Angel. Put the, put the phone you. down. They I'm need here. your attention. I'm seeing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'm here though. But I, if I take a second to come back, it's just because my hands are wet and I'm. We're on a timer. Bubble. We got to get to break. Uh, I see. I see, Jordan. I see what you're up to. <laughs> okay. I don't know. How good are you at cartoon trivia, Jordan? Because if I don't find one that you at least have some knowledge of you're gonna think i'm just picking on you well it wouldn't be the first time okay all right just for that i wonder if angel she has children she might get this one no i'm not gonna give her advantage jordan will complain he'll whine no i like cartoons <laughs> <laughs> i worked at disney remember all right this one everybody should get and if i don't if everybody doesn't get this <laughs> I'm gonna be shocked. Where would you? Oh, I'm supposed to put it in the uh, chat and give them an advantage over Jordan. <laughs> now he's gonna run over to the chat and read when I put it in there. I'm gonna mute people. Behave yourself. No using the wrench for nefarious purposes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the question is, where would you find an ISBN? Number. It's on the trap. Oh, Jordan. On a, uh, on, a, on, a on a sales tag. You heard her say it. Book. That was her final answer. <laughs> that was her final answer. I haven't looked in chat, and I'll say book. Okay. Yeah, I said book second. I said book second. Damn it. Okay. Yeah. My, she did. Yeah. She kind of like. I, I was saying said, on a sales tag on did. a book, and then I realized there's not yeah. a sales tag on a book. Right. So just a book. I'm gonna like, let boom. you have that, Angel. So of course. Because you you didn't are. stop talking. She kept going, of and then she course. extrapolated book a uh, book. So oh. Jordan did have it right. He put it in the chat. Yeah, I did on a book. It's so he first. got that one right. Is How many of you out there in the chat got it book? What is it called that it's on? Because it's on a, a thing. No, it's actually on barcode. the book, on like on it's the back cover it. or on the barcode. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that's okay. usually where a sales tag. That's usually on a sales tag. So put, yeah, but you're right. Put competitive Jordan back in the box. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bring out Christian Jordan. Okay. <laughs> oh no, y'all never get that one. I don't even think Angel would get that one. Well, that was why a good one do about you animals. do this? Like, these could be questions that I would get. You don't know me and what I, I know. Don't, you're not into animals. I don't think you're going to get those What are those you talking questions. about? The only I animals you're animals. into, is which I still don't think is an animal, is sharks. That's just a completely a uneducated <laughs> statement. And it's a fish. Which is an animal. And some of them are tasty fish. But okay. <laughs> See, this is why I love Joshua. Read his comments. He's right. Jordan wins. Absolutely, Joshua. Jordan ain't won like, nothing. He's tied right now. <laughs> I'm tied even though I answered first, and then they all copied me. But that's all right. I'll get an <laughs> A for the class. All right, let's Jordan, see if you, you know, guys... Oh, Jordan, do you know what, uh, who Wario is? Wario? 
Ooh. Like the Mario's arch. Yes, that's what you. That's who you look like <laughs> when you wear that cape. Cape. Super and Mario. We should give you. We should give you a, a like an evil day, like maybe Gordon that's instead of Jordan awesome. or something. <laughs> I'm going to have to go and get an evil hey, mustache now. With I'm just happy he didn't break out a scepter. Then I just would have been through. Oh, you know what? I almost did, but I was like, I don't know if I'll be able to get it on camera. <laughs> Somehow I think you would have managed. Okay, here's the next question. I'm going to put it in the chat. This is... uh, <laughs> What, Jordan? What's the problem? I don't know. Problem at all. Hendrix got it right, too. Well, yeah, everybody copied me. <laughs> no, no. I think Hendrix actually had it before you. Did you I'm know that kidding, there's Jordan, two you different? First. Did you know there's two different ISBN numbers? Mm-hmm. Okay, good for you. Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> no bonus points on this one. The hardest natural substance known is what? Now, this is according to this trivia. In the chat. Okay. Angel, do you want to take a She's she's in the uh, ring right now. I, <laughs> the I hardest know. natural I, substance. I don't know. No. I mean, I have okay. tungsten. I don't know. But I think that might okay. be the one of the highest melting point. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry, Angel. Your answer is incorrect. It's not tungsten. But thank you for playing. Uh, ben? I know it's wrong, but I have no better idea. So I'll say diamond. Okay. No, he's copying me. He's copying me. Uh, no, I don't think so because he didn't put it in the chat. So, I don't think so. I think he had arrived at it on his own. Jordan oh. had it right. He did. You had it right. So now you're two. That's Man, so that was so bad. obvious. I didn't say it. I Everybody thought it was too obvious. Me. Like Damn. I answer for you Jordan, know what? That's calm it. down. I'm done. Calm down. In the you're chat. ahead let's, of Ben. You're ahead of Ben. Let's see who gets it without me answering in the chat first. Let's play this game. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm just glad we're not in the same room because I think our lives would be in danger. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Hendrix. Especially after the fiasco with the wasp. Let's see now. Okay. Let me pick another question. All right. And hey, you guys are not so much into sports. Oh, I wonder if you guys would know that. Hmm. I think I'm gonna just get y'all with this one. We'll now we've got we've seen a lot of different plane crashes talked about on TV and in movies, right? Everybody has heard about a black box, or you know what a black box is, right? I okay. What? Oh, that's because you're a toddler. <laughs> well, this is gonna help you learn about it then, Jordan. You'll you'll learn from this question. And remember, you still have an advantage, so even if they come up and tie you. You know, it's still still kind of fair. Oh, okay. what? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, I got to put the question in the chat first. Right, let me go back over here and put it in the chat. Give our... Because they're behind us. I think if I put it in the chat, they get it about in real time. The question is, what color are aircraft black boxes? I'll answer last. <laughs> Angel, do you want to take a stab at it? Uh, I want to say yellow. That was a good guess. I know they're not black. Exactly. Or good orange. for you. <laughs> uh, ben, what would I'll you say like to say? Fluorescent orange. <laughs> Why did you have fluorescent? I'm just wondering. Because I was thinking about Jordan. <laughs> I'm I'm laughing, but I'm not sure why. Uh, what? Why? Why did? Why was that funny, Ben? I'm sorry. It was kind of funny, but I don't even. I'm not even sure why. He just has a fluorescent personality. Okay, yeah. it's because I'm so bright. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Jordan. What was your answer? Fluorescent orange. Okay. Well, Ben and Jordan got this one right. The the mm -hmm. answer is bright orange. Uh -huh. Let's see if anybody got it in the chat. Anybody got it in the chat? Nope. Okay, so now, in fairness, Angel, you're over two, so you're gonna have to sit this next question out so we can um, break this tie between Jordan and Ben. Last uh, week, I think uh, it was Jordan and Angel, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So this week, 
it's Jordan and Ben. All right. <laughs> I don't know why, Ben, whenever I say your name, I start thinking about Michael Jackson's song. <laughs> ben. I don't know why. I just, I have to push that out of my mind. I don't know why. Do you remember that one, uh, Ben? No, I don't. Okay, he was, he was, I think Ben's messing with me. He was singing about, this was when he was a young boy. He was Are singing about a rat. Are you getting to the question before break, Lisa? I am picking the question, Jordan. If you keep messing with me, I'm going to make sure Ben has an advantage. We'll, we'll find that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he was singing about a rat in the movie. And they actually did a movie called Ben. It was about a rat. Wonderful. Now, there, listen, there's no correlation I just the the song he says his name over and over again. So when so when I said uh, when I say Ben, I don't know why that just comes <laughs> up. Please forgive me, Ben. It's not that was not, just rude. I said I don't know why I keep <laughs> thinking about that dumb song. Okay, so let's see. Nah, no more questions about animals. <laughs> Okay, here we go. This one is trivia, but it's like it's um I don't know if it, I wouldn't say it's really a trick question. It's not really because oh, they, the build up is so unnecessary. Says the man with the <laughs> what is it? It's not a cape. I can't I can't hold I that can't. in my middle roller I deck. Yeah, I actually can't. <laughs> I gotta it's just go. So outrageous. I can't hold it in my middle roll of I can't stay on for the rest of the night. I gotta go. <laughs> the, says the man with the crown and the cloak, okay? <laughs> right, I, put, I, put, I put it in the chat. Okay. Um what has a head, a tail, but does not have a body? Ben. I think about it a little bit more. Okay. Uh, Jordan, is it already in the chat? No, I ain't <laughs> answering first anymore. Why not? I'm just so, mm -hmm. You're such a genius. Well, okay, can I, if I answer first, I get it, right? Because it's a coin. Oh. I didn't say that was right, but okay, if you say so. Ben, a did you want to in a tail and nobody? I'll it's say coin. coin. Okay. See, no, 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 Jordan, you said it first. <laughs> yeah, I did. So, and I know Ben copied you on that one uh -huh. because he had no idea. <laughs> had he said, "Oh, that's what I was gonna say," then I would have gave it to him too. But he said, "I had no idea." So, so what Ben, you told on yourself Lisa? next time. Just go. I was thinking that too. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, guys, we have to we have to put up with him for another week. Wearing the crown and the cloak. Oh my gosh, I'm actually gonna mail it to myself just for oh, fun. Oh, why would you spend the money on that? Oh, wait a minute, this is from the guy who squirted liquid soap all over his bedroom. Never mind. <laughs> okay, we know, we understand. Thank you guys for participating. Angel, did you have a clue? Did you know it was a coin? I trust you, I know you'll tell the truth. Are you there? Okay, I think we lost this to Angel. She's out there taking care of her mini form. I just want to thank Joshua for always believing in me. No, Joshua? I didn't. I didn't know. Okay, didn't know. you didn't know. I did think orange first when I said yellow. I'm really pissed off about that. But... <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Well, thank you for letting us know. Cause see, I knew Angel would be honest. Unlike some other people here that participated. And thank you all of you for being good sports and participating out there in the chat and out there in listening land. I hope that you got them right and actually beat Jordan. And you will always know whether or not you did because we had to ask an extra question. So if you got the other ones right and he didn't, congratulations. You're, you're wearing the crown. The oh, no. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You know you can't play stuff that's copyrighted. Get out of here with that. I got okay. it less than 10 seconds. Don't you worry. <laughs> so prideful you are. Okay. Thank you for participating, Jordan.
Do Anytime. not go get a bigger crown. I don't want to see a double crown or a double I'm gonna get a whatever that thing crown. is next week. Okay. Thank you for hanging with us this far in the broadcast. It is time for us to take a break. When we come back from break, we are going to talk about Sister Angel's topic, which is going to be she wants to talk about suffering. So I hope to see you on the other side of this break, and we'll be back in uh, right about 17 minutes. Thank you, everyone. Praise the Lord, beloved, the most high God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Thank you for staying with us this long. Come to the second part of the broadcast. We had some fun at the end of the first half with um, Angel and Ben and myself. Jordan was kind of a... Uh, no, she what? didn't. What? First thing I didn't for break. Yeah, first thing for bake. I mean, I gotta have a little fun, right? <laughs> so, uh, Jordan uh, misbehaved a little bit, but it was tolerable. We we managed to get through it. And if you missed that part, go back and listen. He managed to keep his crown and <laughs> his uh, his Here cloak. His cloak. Okay, his cloak. So, all right. I just can't hold that in my mineral Rolodex for some reason. I promised Jordan a few minutes to speak to someone in the chat that he he felt he needed to address when we came back. Jordan, please go ahead. Well, actually, I hope Angel says what she was saying on the break too. Um, but I'll just make it really quick. Uh, I because yeah, I think you have a lot of great things to say. Like I remember hearing your testimony, and it just moved me to tears at what you said. But um, for our friend, I did. I went and checked my email and I did see that um, email you sent me. And I also know that you uh, messaged us on CES the other night. And I just want to tell you that I've been where you are. I myself have not been a Marine, which by the way, thank you so much for your service, but I do come from a military family. So a lot of, that level of integrity and expectation has been drilled into me from very early on. Um, I also see that you grew up Roman Catholic, and uh, I have a lot to say about that. And I'm so glad that you stepped away from religion because Roman Catholicism is not biblical Christianity. Um, I'm not going to go into that. It's basically just first century paganism mixed with Christianity. And I can give you all the details about that if you'd like. Um, but I really want to address the fact that what you are feeling right now, because I've been to a point in my life where I just felt so worthless. Nothing made any sense. I had no one to come home to. And eventually I didn't even have a home. I went completely homeless, um, lost my job, all sorts of crazy things. And there was a time in my life where I was hospitalized for uh, being suicidal. And I know what it's like when you're so in that scope of mind where nothing seems right. You feel like a failure. Nothing looks like it's going to get better. Um, nothing makes sense anxiety and depression is just so overwhelming it, it it's just a struggle to make it through the next hour let alone thinking about making it through the next x amount of years but what i would say to you is i'm very grateful that i went through what i did and i'm out on the other side and it's because of moments like this um i think that we have a tendency to get stuck in the here and now um but without a proper focus on how to progress into the future so like while we're here in the here and now we're not making any steps to better our future instead we are just worrying about our future or dwelling on our past while being stuck in the moment rather than being active in the moment and to, it's just I don't want you to give into this spirit of defeat because of the times we are in, in the circumstances you find yourself in, because I mean, I, I'm not I, the last thing anyone wants to hear. I've been there. Last thing they need to hear is any type of like, Oh, 
it's so hard to believe the, anything that's coming out of anyone's mouth. But I really want you to take a step back and think about how much your family does rely on you, even if you don't feel like they are or that you can't provide for them. And even if you don't see the tangible needs that you are providing, and I'll let Angel take it away with this point, because she's going to really hammer this point home much better than I could. But just think about the emotional repercussions and the intimacy that you have in your family as the father figure, because when one person commits suicide, I, I've, I had a friend who committed suicide and a year later his dad committed suicide at his grave site like it's just it's a trickle effect and it just it it causes other um issues and i it's tricky because i don't know your exact situation but i know that there is no situation beyond the redemption that god can bring and there is no um, way that God can't use what you are currently dealing with for his good. I am where I am now, happier than I've ever been. So blessed, many new friends, many new opportunities. But it was just two years ago that I was actively making a decision every day. Am I going to live? Am I going to die? Nothing is going to get better. And it was only because I was willing to make that leap of faith and trust that God was willing to do what he said that he would do. And that was to keep me provide for my needs. The thing is what we think our needs are and what God knows our needs are, are two different things. We put so much emphasis on it, It's like you're saying right here in your letter that, you know, being the man of the family, there is this extra responsibility, but you know, being the man of the family is so much more than just being this, um, what's the word, tangible provider. Um, it is just being the backbone. Even if you don't feel like you are the backbone of your family, you absolutely are. I want you to at least hear this because I want to keep talking to you. I'm so glad that you reached out to me on the email. Um to answer the actual question that you asked, uh, why is it a sin to want to commit suicide? It's the same reason why it would be a sin to want to kill someone else. It's just, it goes against the very will of God. Um, and it's an attempt to play God. It's an attempt to say, I get to control whether I live or die. And you have no idea what your life is going to look like in a year from now. You think it's, and these see like I know what you're thinking right now because I've been there. These are all things that when you're you're hearing these, you're just like, you don't understand. You're rolling your eyes. Like I I know, like none of this is like actually sticking, and it's so hard for you to believe because I'm just a stranger on the internet. But I'm a stranger on the internet who genuinely cares. Like anybody in the chat and on this panel can tell you how much I put my heart and soul into people who actually um feel this way and I've been worried of the last couple of days for you and I've been really praying that you would reach out and I'm so glad that you did but um I think Angel would do a great job at explaining the emotional repercussions that would happen yeah, yeah because I mean when my little cousin who was he's in his early 20s um he did not have children did not have a family um he was still living at home um when he killed himself um, which was only a few months after I had my first child, uh, he gutted our family. Um, our, my family's never been the same. I've never been the same. I wanted to die, and I was a new mother, and I didn't want to live anymore because something so ugly happened that I, I didn't think it was possible. I never anticipated something like that happening in my life. And the thing that no one ever tells you, no one ever told me, all the times I had even considered suicide, which I wanted to kill myself after he killed himself and I couldn't do it to my family because I knew wh what he had done to us and I knew they couldn't survive it. I knew my dad would kill himself if I did. And um, they never tell you how rejected you feel when someone you love kills themselves. Now you're a father and I believe a husband. Um, the, the impact you'll have is is so many times worse 
than what, what my cousin did to our family. He left behind his father who they had just buried his mother three years to the day that he killed himself. And his father's entire life, the past 35, 40 years of his life went up in smoke that day because his only child killed himself on the, the day his wife died three years later. And um, I can't imagine for a child to lose their father. The father is supposed to be, you're, you're the guide for the family. Women are not equipped emotionally to take care of a family all by themselves. Some have to do it, but you don't understand what you provide just by being there, just by being a man. You should not do that to the mother of your children or to your children. You are their example in ways that you can't even imagine. No matter how much of a failure you feel like right now, I feel like a failure too as a mother. I feel like that all the time. I even sometimes feel like they'd be better off without me because they'd have to figure out some other way and maybe somebody more capable would come along because I feel overwhelmed all the time with, with what I, you know, trying to raise four children and homeschool them and do all these things I've never seen another person do. Uh, be this, this wife and mother that I've never witnessed myself. Um, and I feel that way and I get down and then I know, I know because I've been through it. You can't do that to those you love. There is no way in this world that they will be better off without you having lost you to suicide. And you will infect your family with a spirit of suicide if you do that. Um, there is a profound spiritual door you open by killing yourself, a darkness that can enter a family and take hold. It's like some sort of invitation. And, and then th your family will be vulnerable to the same outcome. I've seen it so many times times it runs in families suicide runs in families and it can always start with one person it always does but beyond that when you're you, as long as you still draw breath there's always hope once you end it there is no longer any hope and you saddle your children and your wife with a wound that will never heal not really not really um i was robbed of um, a, a, a level of, I guess, I don't know if you could say innocence. I was already in my late, late 20s when I lost my cousin. But let's just say it was enough to where I no longer viewed the world like I had before. It was dark and ugly. And I knew that life could throw the most merciless evil in your path, things you were not willing to cope with. I was not willing to cope with the fact that my little cousin blew his brains out without even saying goodbye. I wasn't willing to cope with that. I never thought I'd have to cope with something that ugly. And I, I didn't even want to be a mother anymore. I didn't look at my child and feel joy because I knew the, 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 the ugly, cruel curveballs life could throw at me. And I just looked at her as a, another potential source of heartbreak. And um, it was only... It was only after that that I began cursing God with my mouth openly. And I didn't even think I believed in him, you know, but I was so angry. And, um, and, and by his grace, you know, that, that did end up, you know, that was part of, of how I ended up getting saved eventually. But that is not always a guarantee outcome for people. And like I said, it is a far cry to lose your little cousin than to lose your father. You can't even imagine what you mean to your children, no matter what a failure you feel like. You are you are the backbone of that family, no matter what. It's not just about your income. It is a spiritual thing. It's spiritual headship that, that your, your family is under. And God is so good and so merciful that he could take you from your lowest point and somehow use it to... to to deliver you to a, a happy ending you never thought possible. That's what happened to me. And I mean, I was low because I didn't just lose my little cousin. In that same year, I had lost, uh, it was about a year and a half span. I lost my aunt, um, right, you know, t three years the day before that. I lost my mother and I lost my grandmother all within the same year I lost my little cousin. And, um, and I became a mother. 
and I was like a zombie. I was like a dead person walking, and I wanted so badly to die. It was beyond the suicidal feeling I had felt previously, where it was almost like out of anger and frustration, I wanted to kill myself just to, I don't know, pr prove to to life that you know that I wasn't going to take it, you know, uh, that I that you know that I really was as upset as I you know as depressive as I <laughs> as I felt. It was like a weird way to validate my own sadness. This was different. This was a literal desire not to live anymore, and I didn't even, I, it, you know, I, I couldn't kill myself at that point because I are I knew. I knew what I'd be doing to the people I left behind. It is a very profoundly selfish act. If you feel like you're not delivering, you're not being there for your family right now, understand it doesn't end when you die. And the reality of what you did to your family, you'll have to bear that weight one way or another. And you'll see what you did. And you'll have to witness and face the selfishness of the act. You know, life, life is... We're not guaranteed um, a life free of suffering. That's just not how it works it, ever since the fall. That's what we have to deal with. But we are so lucky, so blessed to have a God who loves us and who, who will work miracles in our life. If we take one small step to where we turn towards him, and we, we truly put our trust in him and we, we fall to our knees and just let him lead the way. And it's a, it's a heart thing. And, and and I would advise you every day to just tell him, I don't know how to cope with this. I don't know how to deal with this. I don't know how to overcome this feeling of hopelessness that I'm that that this is like uh, uh, overwhelming me right now. And if he's the God that I know, he will he will surprise you. But the spirit you're operating in right now. You know, you're not, you're not thinking clearly. You're just not thinking, you're, 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 I know that you might feel a lot of self-loathing right now. And so it's hard to feel like you're needed or like you're of any benefit, but maybe you understand the feeling of rejection. Maybe you understand that feeling and you wouldn't want to inflict that on your family. Because I know that when my cousin killed himself, all I could think was how our, our, our relationship, because we were very close and had always been very close. Uh, our relationship and all of our memories and, and all of, you know, the future we could have had in each other's life, that wasn't enough for him. That didn't mean enough to him to keep on going. He rejected me in the most profound way possible. He rejected his father. He rejected all of us. Wasn't enough. And people can say, that's not what it's about. That's not fair. No, that is what it's about. It is about that. It wasn't enough because I know he was enough to keep me from killing myself when I was very seriously considering it just like a year before he died. I was very seriously considering it and it came down to him and I couldn't do it. I felt responsible for him and, and you need to feel responsible for your children because you are their father and there is nothing more important in this world than a father, nothing more important. And you will be setting an example of just giving up to those children and and you think whatever whatever you feel like your failures are right now are bad imagine that imagine that it's serious and the worst thing of all is the fact that it it does uh suicide has a tendency to reproduce itself you you don't want to start and open that door in your family especially you know i don't know the status of their faith but if there's any chance that they're not saved can you imagine the impact you would have? You, the danger you'd be putting them in even eternally. You know, and then listen, we are saved whether or not we kill ourselves. The suicide is not the unforgivable sin. But you got to be saved first. And not to mention, not to mention if you are saved, I, I have to imagine that killing yourself, especially when you're leaving children behind, would not set you up very well in eternity in terms of rewards and loss of rewards. I mean, there are consequences to what we do. And that's a, a very selfish way to end your life. For your, that to be your final act while you still have children who are looking up to you. No matter what you think, my father was not a very accomplished man. He threw a lot down the drain. He had a drug addiction most of my life. And let me tell you, he is still the world to me. I love him so much. 
he has influenced me so much just by the man that he is and all the amazing things about him aside from his failures aside from um the you know the potential he didn't rise to he, and he didn't give up and my father has been close to suicide you know many times and i i, I, I he never disappointed me as much as he disappointed me when he told me that when he told me that he wanted to die that was that was the disappointment, not the drugs, not any of that. But when he told me that he was considering killing himself, I was so outraged that he would even consider doing that to me and his grandchildren because there is nobody that, that is supposed to be an example of, of strength and perseverance and maturity than your father. And I don't even want to think about how the situation you'd be leaving, you know, the mother of your children in. But let's just say it would absolutely break her, no matter what the status of your relationship is. Men need to understand how important they are. Men need to really understand it. We have gotten to a point in society where men don't know their value in a family. And they, they're, they're beating men down on purpose to make them feel like they don't matter or like, like men don't even know their role. They don't even know the role they play anymore. And it's not just about breaking your back and being a workhorse. It's so much more than that. So much more than that. And, um, and I'm sorry you're feeling this way. I know how you feel because I have, I, I too have been, I mean, I was Baker acted at one point. Um, and I, you know, I was for a long time in my life, you know, I was, I would self mutilate. It was like trying to work up the nerve, I guess. Um, I felt suicidal off and on from the time I was 14. And it was a spirit. I know it was a spirit. It's always a spirit. You can't let the devil win in that case. You know, he would love nothing more than to destroy you and your family in one fell swoop. By that one act, you can't take back. So just think about it and, and pray to God. And you know what? Maybe voice these feelings to your family. You know what? That would be the courageous thing. My dad did that. I'm so glad he did because I got to repudiate him. <laughs> and he got to know what he would do to me if he actually went through with something like that. And guess what? His life turned around after that. It was in a, he was in a, it was a really bad, he was in a really bad spot at that time, you know, through really no, no fault of his own, the circumstances after, you know, our family fell apart and so many people died and, you know, he and my aunt found themselves basically destitute in this horrible um, apartment. And there was just no, they didn't see how it was ever going to turn around. My dad is very, um, like, he's, he's he's got a lot of uh, physical handicaps now. He's older. He can barely, he can't stand up straight, you know. And, um, and he, he, it would be hard for him to provide for himself, you know, if he had to get a job. He wouldn't really be able to work. And um, he still voiced those feelings to me, which, you know, was which was, you know, I have to commend him for that because a lot of men never do that. And he did. And, you know, he, he was uh, contrite after I, I told him he had no right to do that to me or his, or his grandchildren. Because no matter where you think you're, you're coming up short, you want to come up short, do that. Quit on them. Just give up. Reject them eternally. That's what it feels like when somebody kills themselves. Make them embittered toward God. That's what it does. You know, I don't know what their relationship is with God, but they could become very angry with him. You know, there's just so many, so many uh, ripples in the ocean that something like that causes. And um, I don't mean to come off as harsh, but it it's important. It's important that you understand as a man, since you seem to be a, a duty bound man, an honor bound man. You understand that this is the this is the most dishonorable act you could commit, and um, nothing that you're failing to do right now could even come close to to, to to giving up on them and leaving them leaving them behind. Never even able to talk to you again, feeling like that you didn't love them enough to keep going. Because don't no matter what you say, that is how they will feel. Do you want them to feel that way forever without you even being able to correct them? So I just hope you'll consider that because, you know, I wish my cousin had considered that before he did that to his father. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, are no, you guys no, there? No, no apologies, Angel. <laughs> Thank you for sharing yeah. that very painful part of your past. 
and what you went through with your cousin and your even your family with their struggles. This is not yeah. unique to anyone in particular. I mean, this happens. The devil tries to tell everybody, why don't you just go ahead and commit suicide? Well, you don't know nobody love you. It, he talks to people all the time. That's what he does. He'll even say things in your head, make you think it's you, where you, he'll say, I'm a loser. And it ain't even you. It's happened to me recently. It's happened to me recently where mm -hmm. the thought they'd be better off without you. They'd be better off without you. Joel's mom would have to come, you know, help with the kids. And she she's like a child psychologist, like, you know, child educator. She'd be really good. Like, that's happened. But you know what? I'm their mother. There's no replacing me. There's no replacing the impact and the, you know, there's a spiritual tie there. Whatever I do will be reflected in them no matter what just will it happened it's happened to me my mom my mom is reflected in me no matter you know it's like a, a hardwired thing and um haven't you seen spirit suicide infect the family i have I, i'm trying to you know we're just it's like a, a ripple effect like like jordan was saying you you imperil your children when you do that there's many examples of people who've killed themselves and their parents like especially fathers i've noticed especially fathers where somehow, like, the father kills himself, and then it, it starts this cascade of sons killing themselves, especially. Um, I, I've read about it in the literature when I was, a, you know, a psych major. Um, it's, a, it's a really well-known phenomenon that they, you know, they try to explain it like it's some sort of, um, you know, like, oh, it's because of the example he said, or, or, or they say it's, like, genetic. I don't think so. I think it's spiritual. Right. I think a spirit of suicide enters the family at that point. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, he's saying things like, well, if I commit suicide, then my family will get the benefits and, you know. Um, <laughs> All the money in the world couldn't make up yeah, for that. That's what I was just saying. I just put it in the uh, the chat that, and, you know, what, what you're saying to him is that he's basically inviting in destruction into his home to destroy his whole family and that those benefits Watch will not be Watch how fast that money goes away. Yeah, those benefits will not you know? be any consolation to them. Your children, if you were to do that, God forbid, and your wife and your mother and your father and your other loved ones and friends and other extended family are going to wonder why you didn't reach out to them for help and why you didn't tell them what was going on and in your soul if you're troubled and There'll be a million questions that will never be answered. And your children will forever, if even if they do manage to maneuver through this life, wonder why you didn't love them enough to stay and fight for them in this life. And this is all a trick of the devil. The devil is trying to drag you to hell. And hell is a very literal and real thing. And I don't think right now you even know where you're going to go when you die, if you were to die. And that ain't a good thing. And then you're going to cause those questions in your own children's mind. The devil, as I said to you a few minutes ago, hates you. He hates your precious children. He hates your loving wife. He hates them. And he wants to kill and steal and destroy from you and your family. That is his mission. No better way than to convince the father of the family, the man of the family, to end his life. There's just no better way to destroy a family. And um, you just, you struck a blow. You fought back just by talking to us about it. Yes. I want you to do that. And the thing that I don't want anyone to forget is the fact that all of these things are temporal. They these things cannot last forever. These urges, these height and peak. I remember I it got to the point where I wasn't even in pain anymore. I was just numb. Like I was doing stupid stuff just to feel um alive. Like I was getting in physical altercations with people just to feel something. And when you reach that point where, like, you're looking at your arm and you can't even, like, to tell if it's your arm because you just feel that detached or you're looking out. And That's why I was cutting like myself. Yeah. Yeah. It's all dissociation, depression. And then, 
when you do feel something, all it is is heightened anxiety. But I can't tell you. I, I mean, like, I'm this is a act of God right here because I don't think anybody who would know me today, like, who are just meeting me, would know that I came from such a dark, depressed, pessimistic past because the joy of the Lord just exudes in my life and I'm just always happy. Like, do I still have days where depression, and anxiety get me? Yeah, but the thing is, I have joy to fall back on. And joy is not an emotion. That's the thing that you need to realize is when you have the Holy Spirit, you're not relying on emotions anymore. You are relying on spiritual fruits. And that is joy, peace, love, long suffering, all these things. And that is a gift from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It surpasses emotions. It gets down to the very core of your soul. So do not let one season of your life that you can't see past right now because it's so confusing and it's so dark dictate the tra trajectory that your family is going to take for generations, even beyond just your kids' generations. That we're going to see the effects of this for generations. I've seen it in my own family. The stupid decisions that people have made, my, like, my generation is the first generation in so long to kind of break these habits in our family. And it's just not worth it. You asked me, don't I think that something, or I forgot how you worded it, but basically you were asking me, do I think the pain is worth it? Absolutely. I am. I, it's so weird to say now, cause I would have done anything to escape the pain at the time. But I am actually very grateful that I went through the pain that I did because it's given me insight into moments like this. And if it if I had to go through the years of crap that I did just to bring me to this moment and minister to you tonight and say it and you realize that your life is worth living i would go through it again and again and again if it meant that you would stay here with us tonight hmm. absolutely me too and i was beyond even pain i mean i feel like pain and depression are what we feel like almost like when we still have a choice but like what i went through with like because i didn't just lose some family members i mean my aunt and my my mom and my grandmother were like and my cousin they were these the most important people in my whole life mm -hmm. they meant everything to me they were the very people by which I defined my identity at the time and I had never known a world without them and they were so they were my comfort those those were the people I went to for comfort and they were all gone and I became a mom and I had nobody nobody to turn to no mother figure and um I was not even in pain. It was, it was beyond that. It was an absolute disgust with life because I didn't know God either. So to me, it was just all without any meaning. Had, there was no meaning. It was just the promise of suffering with no meaning. And, um, and I, I, it was right after that. It was right after that, that God began just picking me up, picking up the pieces and, he delivered me to this this existence where I was happier than than I ever would have even thought possible in my wildest dreams, and it, and it, and and it was only in the midst of that that I ended up becoming saved. I mean, he was that uh, merciful on me while I was still rejecting him because he knew where I had to get to in order to get to a place where I could see him. He showed me because I knew the the way that I had had this cascade of horrible things happen to me back to back. You know, without a war or a plague to explain all these losses, just sudden unrelated things, um, you know, losing people left and right, all the pe people that like I wasn't willing to lose. I knew there was a force at work that was not just chance. It was something bigger. And I felt that I was being punished. And so he showed me that he was there. And then he showed me his kindness and his grace by, um, uh, you know, my husband came into my life um, who the one man that I'd ever carry a torch for, for, and I had loved him for like 11 years unrequited. And he like swooped in and saved me and my nine month old daughter. Um, and now we have, you know, uh, you know, three more children of our own and another on the way. And we have the happiest, I mean, truly I did not know it was possible to be as happy as I am. 
And sometimes you have to get to that low before God can really get your attention and pick you back up. And people, I think a lot of times people cut it off before he can do that. You know, before he can, he can show them that, that mercy and that grace, they, they end it. They give up. And um, my cousin never left a note or anything. Just questions. And just um, regret and uh, just don't even know what to do with the memories that we had. Because when someone chooses to end their life, they murder themselves, right? So you're just as angry as you would be at someone who killed your loved one, but they're also the, that loved one. Do you understand? That's, that's, it's a very difficult thing to ever cope with and make sense of. It's, it's, it's a curse you're putting on the people that you love that you just can't imagine. You just don't, you cannot imagine the, the effect that it has on people. And, um, I, I can, you know, no amount of money that he could have left behind in life insurance would have made up for what he did. None of it. And I, and, and it's funny when the spirit of suicide and darkness enters a family, how, how, you know, it, it wouldn't surprise me if that money somehow got eaten up or blown or, yep. you know, it didn't help them at all because it's cursed money. It's blood money. Yeah. Yep. Well, let me, and I want to, I want to stop right here though. Uh, and say something, Ben, I'm gonna let you speak. I just want to say, uh, I want to stop right now and I want to pray for uh, this gentleman, uh, Sergeant Flores. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of King Jesus on behalf of Sergeant Flores. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we bind the spirit of suicide, the spirit of murder, the spirit of self-murder, the spirit of self-loathing, depression, these lying spirits that are speaking to him right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, we rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take your hands off of this man's mind and off of his body and remove yourself from his home right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Loose him and let him go in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we pray and ask for your ministering spirits to come in and minister on behalf of us who are your heirs to your salvation on this man's behalf. And we stand in the gap for him right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We rebuke, rebuke the forces of darkness that would try to hinder him from hearing and or receiving the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that he might be saved and be converted. In Jesus name. We claim him for your kingdom. We rebuke the forces of darkness. Right now in Jesus name. Satan you are alive. Leave him his mind and his family alone. In Jesus name. Amen. Now Amen. Sergeant Flores. You are not alone. Every person at some point in their life. Whether they are saved or unsaved, is attacked by the forces of darkness in varying degrees and varying ways. I lost my father, my home, and my job of more than 10 years all in one year. But I can honestly say, to the best of my recollection, I never contemplated suicide. Is that because I am a super wonderful, amazing person? No, because I am incapable of receiving the devil's lies. No, it's because I have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And when the devil spoke lies to me, I did what the Bible says to do, which is to cast down vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You, sir, whether you realize it or not, are made in the image of your creator. And as I said to you earlier, the devil hates you. He hates your wife. He hates your children. And he wants to destroy you. And if you were to do this thing, you are playing right into his hands. But now we have bound the forces of darkness in Jesus name so that we could speak to you and share with you 
the gospel of the kingdom that you might be saved and converted. So you will make the devil a liar forever and ever. We're going to preach the gospel to this gentleman and everyone else that's listening so that they can be saved if they're not saved and receive the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's what this is all about. This thing is spiritual. It's real. What you can't see is more real than the trials and tribulations you're going through and the pain that you feel right now. The spirit world is more real. And there are angels right now that are actually fighting and doing battle to save your life. This is not a game. Sergeant Flores, it's not a mistake that you're here this evening. It's not a mistake. It's not an accident that you came in. It's not a, a mistake or accident that you emailed Jordan and asked for help and let him know what was going through your heart and mind. Okay? We understand that it was a cry for help. We want you to understand that this is a spiritual battle and what you're going through, even though it may look very dark right now. The Lord Jesus Christ is greater than all of that. And he wants you to become his child. He wants you to be translated from this demonic dark world into the kingdom of his dear son. That's what he got up on the cross for, to pay for all your sin and for all your shortcomings and all your failings and to restore you to right relationship with him, the father and the Holy Spirit, the, the, the Godhead. This is why Jesus came into the world. It was to save people like you and me and everyone else who will hearken to the voice of the Lord. And right now he is calling to you. He is standing at the door of your heart and knocking. So you, I, I, when I asked you, how would I get into heaven? If I were to ask you, your answer to me was by believing in God and trying to do good and believing what Jesus did on the cross for me. Part of that's true, but the other part of it is going to keep you from entering a relationship with Jesus and entering the relationship or entering heaven because you are not fully trusting in Jesus Christ alone. So the gospel message, and I understand being raised Roman Catholic, it was delivered as something completely different, but the gospel message as it is in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 15, one through four, the entire book of Romans, um, you know, you, 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 you're very familiar the fact that we're, we're all fallen men. We're all um, lost in our sin. And because of that, we all deserve eternal separation from God, which is the eternal lake of fire. Um, but the thing is, God loved man so much. Man who had fallen, man who had did horrible things. Men who have put themselves beyond a point of redemption, very similar to how you must feel right now. He loved us enough to become man himself, and that man was Jesus Christ. And he lived a perfect and sinless life, a life that you and I never could live. And when we're talking about suffering and everything that Jesus endured, not just on the cross, just throughout his entire life, being completely betrayed by the people in his own hometown, being homeless, all these things. But you don't read about that because they didn't mean anything to Jesus like they would us. Jesus never worried, even though he only had a couple loaves of bread and a crowd of 500 to feed. He never worried because he knew through the power of God he could do it. And he, it was amazing the things that the, even the disciples of Jesus were able to do because of faith alone. And when we do talk about his death, you have to think about everything that led up to the fact that before he even died to be the atonement, he was mocked, he was spat on. He was punched. He was kicked by his own people. The same people who were just yelling Hosanna days before were now yelling crucify him. He was ripped to the point or he was whipped to the point where his flesh was torn from his body. He had a crown of thorns smashed into his head. He did all these things because he loved you. He could have just died on the cross, but he went through all this brutality because what would we have seen 
if we didn't see Jesus brutally beaten. We would have seen somebody who died on the cross, but to see the brutality that he was willing to go through, and then for us to not even understand the spiritual magnitude of everything that happened once he did die on the cross, he did all of that so that when he rose again, he provided a new way, a new covenant for you to enter by faith alone in him. And when you place your faith in Jesus Christ as the only blood atonement for your sin, his life, death, burial, resurrection being the only way into heaven, and you cannot work your way and there is nothing else you can do, it's him alone, you will take on his imputed righteousness and he will take on your sin. Essentially, you guys do a trade. He takes on your sinful life, you take on his perfect life, and you are seen as blameless in the sight of God. And in that moment, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who then circumcises your heart from your flesh, cutting you off, sanctifying you, setting you apart for a purpose, baptizing you into the body of Christ, and you will be kept by the power of God. It is the most crucial decision anyone can make. And I think a lot of what you're feeling right now, if if you truly did not understand salvation, I can't imagine how much your life would change the moment you receive the free gift from Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the earnest of your inheritance, the down payment. I just Pray that you will call out to Jesus. Place your trust in him. This There's no time like now. Well, what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose by holding on for just another day to call out to Jesus? What do you have to lose? You have nothing to lose, only to gain. What would you tell? Just let's flip the script. What if this was your daughter who was coming to you tonight? saying that she wants to end her life tonight because she feels so worthless and you had a ticket into heaven and also a motivator to keep her here on this earth what would you tell her to do i just really pray that you will sincerely consider this because jesus provided a way not for you to just have eternal life, but to free you even from suffering here on this earth. And when you do suffer here on this earth, regardless of what trials and temptations may come to you, you still have joy because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. Thank you, Jordan. Well, Amen. and yeah, it's not doing our best. That's a very important thing. It's not, um, Jesus doesn't just cover where we fail to do our best. It's an entirely vicarious exchange, like Jordan said. It's all or nothing. So it's literally not, it has nothing to do with anything you do from here on out. It has nothing to do with your salvation at all or what you've done before. Nothing at all. You have to let that go. That is what so many false converts believe, and they are are holding back from truly and fully trusting Jesus. It's all him. It has to be all him because the standard for salvation for eternal life is hundred percent perfection from birth to death, not doing your best. It's nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible is doing your best sufficient for salvation or atonement. It's, it's a hundred percent perfection and none of us are capable of that. So only Jesus can do it. So it has nothing to do with anything that you do. And no, no, no matter no matter you know uh, how bad it is, we are saved because we are saved and sealed upon believing the record of what Jesus did for us, that he was sufficient. And so that's the most important thing you have to grasp. That's, that's difficult. It's a difficult thing to grasp for a lot of people. But if you just understand imputed righteousness and that it has to be all or nothing, mm-hmm. it, you know, it's pretty simple at that point. And, um, you know, you're not earning God's love and you're not, you're not keeping it either. You'll become his child. It's about being born or not born. It's about being dead or, or alive, right? And so, like like uh, so many have said, Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people alive. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah. it's an absolute uh, all or nothing proposition. Yeah, and I see your question here, and this I, I 
I'm trying to think of who all would have been there. I know Hendrix and Joshua probably were there in the chat. They can tell you. I was just presented with this exact same question. Um, you know, you're asking like if God could love a sinner like you, and basically, are you beyond the point of God's grace? I just worked all last week with a guy by the name of Damien whose father was killed by the Crips and he joined a gang just to get back. And he has been in these nonstop gang wars for years now. And he reached out saying he felt that he was beyond the grace of God and there was nothing he could do. And we talked for a whole week and Joshua Hendricks and maybe um, Boy DC was also there um, just looking through the chat, but they can tell you I actually broke down crying oh lisa you were actually there <laughs> but i broke down crying pleading with him to realize that god does love you there's no one beyond the grace of god and i even brought up the fact that jeffrey dahmer in prison was converted to christianity like if god can save that man god can save you and the thing is, that is the lie that the devil wants to keep you at, that you cannot be redeemed. But you, anyone can be redeemed. The world, are you in the world? Yes, he came to redeem those in the world who will place their faith in him. And Damien um, did place his faith in Jesus Christ. And this whole, la like these last few days and everything, have been so transformative. He can't even put it into words because he listened to what the gospel message was and he trusted in what Jesus Christ did. And he's free from all of that. And now he's working so hard on teaching his six-year-old little boy the Bible, reading stories to him. Like, I have no doubt that Jesus can do the same through you. This man who just a week ago was wanting all these gang members dead and felt that he was beyond God's grace because of all the things he did while he was in this gang is now on fire in love with the Lord and feels the very love of God in his life. And it's just overflowing onto others in his life. There's nothing more beautiful than that. I mean, remember Paul, he wasn't just killing people. He was persecuting the church. He was persecuting mm -hmm. believers. And not only was he saved, God loved him and saw enough in him that, you know, he he gave him the, this gift of Christ appearing to him directly to uh, and choosing him to be, you know, the, the, the apostle to the Gentiles. And he's mm -hmm. the most honestly celebrated apostle there is in scripture. I mean, many argue he, he wrote more, most of the books, but he was he of one of one single person. He was the one who wrote most, more books in scripture than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And um, I think a lot of us admire him the most. I know I certainly do. Yeah. And um, I, you know, I was, I was a hater of God from the time I was a little kid. I, I, I remember being seven years old, priding myself on making Christians cry because I was angry and jealous that they could believe something. And that it was so comforting and I was too afraid to, too afraid to get my hopes up. So I was hateful and I, I, you know, I, I wasn't a murderer, but um, you know, they say that, you know, my heart was dark. It was, it was, it was evil and full of hate for, for, and resentment to the Bible. And God loved me enough to, to work uh, untold miracles in my life to bring me to where I am. And, um, uh, you know, nobody is beyond God's grace. In fact, those are his very favorite people to save. I truly mm -hmm. believe that he loves a redemption story. That's what he's all about. So the worse you think you are, the more God wants to wants to save you, the more he loves you, the more more beautiful it is that moment when you actually uh, accept him and see the truth and believe uh, the, all of heaven rejoices in those moments. That's what the whole, you know, with the Jews, you know, that's why he's not done with them. That's why he can't wait to to wrap them in his arms. The remnant I will believe and how heaven will rejoice on that day because they turned away from him. So completely, they persecuted him. They they cried for his blood, and they will, I believe, persecute the church before all is said and done, and, and kill believers. And they are God is going to celebrate on that day when they finally see that they were wrong. So no, you're not beyond redemption. You are, you know. No, I don't know what you think you've done, but you know, the worse it is, the more uh, the more eager God is 
to save you, the more, um, the more the angels in heaven will rejoice on that day. So uh, never think that. I mean, that's just <laughs> the farthest thing from the truth is that, that somebody could be beyond redemption. Right. The Bible says that he is willing that none should perish. So God is not willing anyone should perish. It, it's are you willing to receive his salvation? Are you are you willing are you willing to receive him and, and believe it? So who, the moment you believe in him, you receive the forgiveness of sins. You receive the fact that you've uh, all your sins have been completely forgiven. You're a new man you, in his sight. You're you're a brand new creation. The old is gone. Your your sins are separated from you as far as the east is from the west. And you are, he sees you in Christ's righteousness. We were all born sinners because Adam sinned. And likewise, if you believe in Christ, you'll be born again in Christ, uh, a new creation, perfectly righteous, as if you had never sinned, incapable of sin. There's no sin that keeps anyone out of, out of heaven. The only, there's no unpardonable sin. I don't, I, I'm not a big fan of that unpardonable sin. There's only unpardoned sin. And that uh, you know, reason sin goes unpardoned because you never received the salvation. So uh, there's absolutely no, any man who enters in, he's the door. Any man uh, who hears his voice and believes enters into that door. It's a one way door. Once you, once you enter in the door of eternity, there's no getting out. You're in his hands forever. And so it, it's very simple. Okay, praise the Lord. Well, I would like to invite you, Sergeant Flores, to continue uh, to listen this evening as well as uh, reach out to uh, Brother Jordan uh, the Revi at Revivalist. Brother Jordan, what's your email? I don't want to give it wrong. Are you there? Did I lose you? Okay. At Revivalist. I think it's Revivalist for Christ. Sorry, I keep... Is it I Gmail? Yeah, it's at Gmail. He's already sent me an email, so I'll email him back tonight, too. But, mm -hmm. yeah, reach out to me anytime. You keep the line of communication open. It's by simply placing your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done, his finished work on Calvary. Uh, Jesus said, it is finished. That is the complete and full payment. All you have to do is believe on him and what he has done in his life, death, burial, and resurrection. By your own admission, you recognize that you're a sinner and you can't save yourself. That's awesome because a lot of people have to be convinced of that before they can even believe in Christ. So you, you've already beat half the battle right there as far as getting yourself out of the way and no pride blocking you from receiving Christ. Just place your faith and trust in him. Uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So there's a couple of scriptures for you right there to meditate on. Uh, my email, if you would like to reach out to me, is the number four, the Most High Jesus. At proton, P R O T O N, mail.com. Uh, we'll make ourselves available to you and we'll answer any questions that you might have. We also have videos right on the channel, our channels, if you'd like to hear more, as well as, um, again, just reaching out to us. You can place your faith in Jesus right now. You can just cry out to Him. I, I would say this the simplest sinner's, sinner's prayer is Jesus, I believe. Jesus saved me. Okay. So, I mean, when you look in the Bible at the eunuch, Philip asked the eunuch, he was translated to actually talk to this man. And he simply declares, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. <laughs> so, um, in Acts 16 31, uh, when the jailer uh, was there with uh, Paul and Silas, he says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They were in prison and they've been singing and praising the Lord. And, they, it, it, and, and the Bible says that the, the doors, the, the cells opened up from their praise and their worship there. The power of God fell in there. And the jailer thought when he saw the door open that they had left and he was about to kill himself because he knew the Romans would have killed him if they had escaped. And they cry out to him, sirs, don't, 
Don't don't do yourself any harm. We're still here. They didn't even leave. And it was such a witness to him that they didn't leave. That he asked, what must I do to be saved? And they say simply, they say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And your whole house. And the reason is, he says the whole house is because once a person is born again, salvation comes to that home. When you walk back through the door, salvation walks through that door. Why? You're going to witness of Christ. So this is a powerful thing. The Lord loved you enough to do battle for you tonight through us speaking against those demonic princip uh, principalities who are trying to destroy you. The devil is alive. Okay, um, let's see what he says here. I just want to read it. He says, all right, thank you. Okay, I know the Lord is ministering you right now, and I know that you feel convicted in your spirit. The Lord is calling to you, and I hope you will answer his call. He's a gentleman. He's not going to force his way in. You have to let him in. That's why the Bible says Jesus stands at the door and knocks. So he's been knocking on your door all night and, and long before this. This is just a culmination. You could have had, and you may not be uh, aware of this, you could have had a grandmother or grandfather or great great somewhere in your family lineage that was a born again believer and they prayed for you, even prayed for your generations. Or you have a friend or a co worker who is interceding for you and has placed you on their prayer list. One of your fellow uh, uh, Marines could be a believer and been praying for you. There's all kinds of things that could be going on right now that you don't even know about because that's how valuable and precious you are. So please don't believe the devil's lies. Does anybody have anything else? Because I do want to uh, at least uh, get a Jordan opportunity to, we have about a half hour left before we end the broadcast. Jordan, I'd like you to uh, go ahead and um, present your topic. I think that's enough time for you to to do that. Well, I yeah, I I mean I can or if Angel or ben, whoever wants to go, it's fine because I still I don't know if, like half hour. I I could try to get in a half hour, but I know you need a little more up. time than that. You probably it's probably a little bit more, especially if we wanted. Well, to have you know what? OK, combo. fine. We'll, we'll table it till next week then and we'll start yeah. the broadcast with that one. Angel, why don't you go ahead? Because I think that's my tie in with what you wanted to talk about. Which was suffering. And I know that. Um, when it comes to suffering, sometimes people think they have the corner on the market. They think that they're the only one who's ever suffered. But as I had just put into the chat when I was uh, sending a message to Sergeant Flores that the Bible talks about the suffering that the Lord Jesus Christ went through in many places. But one passage was the prophecy in Isaiah 53, which was written over 700 years before Christ. See, things like this is what proves the Bible is true because of the prophecies. See, you could you could write something up up after the fact and and say this was the word of god that wouldn't take a whole lot but when you when you write about it millennia before the lord even shows up like in psalms <laughs> okay uh and i'm talking about where he manifested physically on this earth in a body to go to the cross all right where he was born the Bible says basically he prepared himself an earth suit, came down here in the likeness of sinful flesh, was born of a virgin for the purpose to go to Calvary. When he was wrapped, when this Bible says he was wrapped in swaddling clothes, swaddling clothes is a shroud. He was born to die. For this cause, he came into the world to save people like you, Sergeant Flores, people like me, people like everyone walking around. If you're human, the Lord wants to save you. That's what he came into the world for. And it ain't about what you've done. It's about what he's done. Okay. So, Angel, you wanted to talk about suffering. And I think this might tie in. Because obviously this man was hurting and is hurting. And we've all been there. As I just said earlier, I lost my father, 
my home, and my job. I know what it's like to lose a job. We all, I think anybody who's ever worked has lost a job at least once in their life, especially living in the United States in these last days. I mean, it just, the whole concept of working for a corporation like our grandparents did and our great grandparents did uh, for 30, 40 years or until you retired or died is gone out the window. We know that. That's highly unlikely that anybody will be able to do that any longer. So, the expectation that that will happen is, is probably not even realistic in these days. So Sister Angel, what would you like to speak on concerning suffering? Well, um, I, you know, I, I guess one of the biggest things that I, I've learned, um, you know, in the past few years, and I feel like through, um, you know, just a, a greater knowledge of scripture and kind of God walking me through, you know, kind of what to expect in this life and what not to is I feel that, um, you know, even believers sometimes uh, feel like they're, they'll get a, they'll get, maybe you could say a chip on their shoulder, their shoulder, they'll get resentful about life because they feel like they are somehow entitled to fairness, fairness in the world, fair, and, you know, some sort of, um, you know, I, I, I think a lot of people will say that, yeah, you know, suffering is a part of life, but they will get very resentful when they feel their suffering is unfair. And I feel like through scripture, and I think Ben will have to help me out on this. We were talking about this earlier um, because I hadn't fully fleshed this out on how to explain it. And then I got really drained by being out in the cold rain. (laughs) So my brain's not working too well, but um, you know, I, I I feel that um, if we understand the fall of man and the the sin nature of man, that um, it should make it actually easier to deal with, with uh, unfairness in life, because I, I don't, I don't feel that we were promised it in the Bible, not, not in the fallen world. I don't feel that um, uh, God ever promised that that life would be fair, or that people would be fair, or that people would treat us fairly. And I feel like a whole lot of the um, the lost world's, uh, you know, delusions of utopia and delusions of, you know, um, what, what will eventually lead them to the Antichrist is this expectation of fairness this expectation that they'll be able to um, somehow uh, fix this world and make it, and make it, uh, I guess what you call equitable uh, for all. Um, and I, I, I just don't see that anywhere in scripture, you know, and I, I was even looking at by the sweat of your brow, you will eat bread. You know, that was a promise to God from God <laughs> from right off the bat, which was that it, you know, to live would be to suffer. It would be to, to work and to suffer and to toil and that um, nothing would come easily for any of us. And then once you factor in at it, you know, dealing with fellow fallen human beings, it would be, it's, it's a childish and unreasonable and irrational expectation to, uh, to expect fair play in the world. And I just see so much um, resentment and bitterness in people, believers and unbelievers, that comes from this idea that somehow... When, you know, oh, that's no fair, basically that mentality. And I feel like I've been really, del- I, I used to get really eaten up with that. Um, and I feel like I've been somewhat delivered from that with this understanding because I, um, I don't really expect any different from people. And I don't think that God calls us to expect different. And, you know, until the Christ returns and makes all things new, I, you know, God makes all things new. I don't, I don't think that we're supposed to, um, really expect it. We are supposed to treat others as we would like to be treated. That's on us. But to really, um, to get bent out of shape over unfairness in the world and people putting themselves first or put, you know, their tribal interests first or whatever, it just, it causes so much unnecessary resentment because people think somehow that, that they're entitled to more than that. And, um, and I know that, that, uh, a lot of my bitterness and frustration when I was younger, you know, revolved around that. And I see Satan using it in the younger generations now to um, to stoke rebellion um, on one side because people are eaten up with with anger and resentment over what they perceive as unfairness. For instance, when it comes to you know, let's say uh, the student loan situation, which I am a you know I, I I I made the stupid mistake of taking out student loans, and look, I do think it was you know unfair that uh 
<laughs> that the that the college is, you know, basically the whole world told me that the only way I could even hope for any type of future was to go to college. And then, you know, um, when they offer you these loans, uh, which seems so easy to get and without any, you know, we never have any financial education, really, that I remember <laughs> growing up. We don't really know what we're signing up for. Not really. And then we kind of uh, we sign away so much of our, you know, <laughs> our earning potential right there off the bat when, when we're really not old enough to know any better. And that and that's caused a lot of people to become socialist uh, recently. You know, a lot of millennials are very embittered by this idea and they think it's not fair, but they have to pay back these loans. And on the one hand, yeah, I think it's unfair that they kind of put you in that position when you're, you know, I feel like they knew what they were doing. Let's just say, I feel like it was a snare that they lure us into, but at the same time, you know, it was all on me. It was on me that I, I did it. You know, it's about like, there's a lot of, a lot of times when people are embittered about what they perceive as unfairness and unfair suffering. It's really that they're not actually taking accountability for their part in the situation. And, um, I, I do, I just sense a, a, a very um, prevalent tendency in people, especially today, to uh, to feel like they're entitled to not having to suffer and not having to um, and to just expect fair play from people that really don't owe them anything, right? People are really, you know, uh, especially when you're when you're lost and you're dealing with lost people, you know, the idea that you're that that people um, actually owe you fair treatment even is delusional and it really comes from a fundamental misunderstanding of the nature of mankind since the fall. And so I, you know, I was just kind of wanting to put that out there and kind of riff off of it. I know we don't really have a lot of time left, but I know Ben had some thoughts because he said that he had come to some realizations recently regarding this that really, uh, 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 kind of opened his eyes on some things. So I don't know if you, you have anything to, to add to that, Ben. Well, I, I, I've struggled for a long time about uh, issues in my life um, that I thought were unfair, you know, uh, especially not, not only just unfair, but like I would do something to uh, I would do something uh, to make it right and care, or counter the what I saw was unfair. And um, and that so I felt like at that I, I, was, I, I didn't really feel this way, but in, t in t later in life, you kind of like, OK, well, I did this. So I'm, I, I should be, I, I should, I'm owed this, you know, that not only did it, does everyone else have it, but I did something to, um, to earn this, this thing, whatever it may be in life. And when you don't get it and you still you see other people have it, um, you know, it, it can make you bitter and, and it makes you question God. And it's like, God, why, 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 why does everyone else have it? And ultimately, um, I think it comes down to, uh, well, I, I got, we know that God uses all things for the good of those that love him. So, uh, for ult ultimately the, the peace I, I had the you know, the, what gives me peace is I know that God, even though I don't understand it, um, I know that God is using it for, for, for my good. Um, and I think, um, you know, sometimes that's very difficult, you know, especially when, you know, it, it's, a maybe so, it's something that's integral to your identity, um, that uh, you know, whatever it may be in life, but um, it, it, you know, again, I think it I, it, it really put, tests your faith. And uh, but ultimately, I, I am you know, I do realize that God does it f for my own good. Uh, so so I, again, it's hard to know um, how it's you know, it's easy to say, well, geez, I I I would I would still be in the same place I'm at if I if I if this weren't true or this negative thing in my life wasn't there, but. Uh, you know, you, you, it's easy to say that, but is it really true? Like, for example, I mean, I, I think so, the, well, an issue in my life, for example, that I, I felt for a long time was unfair and I had a lot of bitterness. Um, I do believe it, it caused me to draw closer to God and uh, uh, to pursue a relationship much, much more earnestly than I otherwise would have. Um, so I think it's important to put these things in perspective and realize it, it, I almost feel like uh, a lot of times, you know, when you're saying you're treating, you're being treated unfairly or, or, uh, or whatever, you're really, you're really, uh, it's an indictment against God in some cases. And I, I think that we need to be really careful uh, about that attitude that not only, you know, what you're saying about God implicitly, uh, but also, you know, what, um, you know, I, what, what are you harboring in your own heart, you know?
what, what do you need to deal with? It's it, it's often when when people are complaining, it's something they need to deal with in themselves. Uh, and so, and, and, you know, I know all these things. I do all these for a long time, but yet there are some things that are so personal and so hard to face. Um, even though I, I, I kind of pride myself on being able to not, I, I know I'm never scared of the truth. I'll, I'll go wherever it takes me. And, but sometimes it's, it's just, again, it's, it's the sin nature, you know, and it, it's, you know, sin is deceitful. That's what it is. It's deceitful. It, it, it deceives you. And so, um, you know, promises life, but it only gives death. Um, so, I mean, suffering is important and built character. You know, I think God adds, puts it there to, to actually get you to the next level, really. You know, there would be something you won't deal with for 20 years or whatever, but that thing there, you know, ultimately that's something you need to deal with. Um, and for me, I thought I would never would deal with it. But in the last, I would say for me in particular, in the last, I don't know, six months or so, um, I'll probably go through a midlife crisis, but uh, I had to deal with these things that I haven't dealt with in a long time. And I didn't even think I had the, the, the mental, uh, I don't even, I didn't know if I had the insight to even deal with it. Cause I didn't know what it was, you know, like what, what is this? What, what is the source of all this grief in my life and depression? Um, and, you know, I think I, for me in particular, I realized that on a spiritual level, especially now, I think the Holy Spirit's really working in my life and revealing things to me. Um, and showing me what's really important, um, that you're able to face those things. And so I believe that that thing was put in front of me for a long time so that I could grow closer to him and, and real, and not, in a, not, not, not in a trivial way. I mean, in, in a deep, in a, a day by day, moment by moment walk of faith. Um, so in that sense, I'm grateful, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be days where I'm still bitter about it sometimes, but in that sense, I'm grateful that again, you know, like, like you guys said earlier this, so far that this life is temporal and the Bible talks about, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a fleeting existence and um, it may not seem that way, but uh, I know as I get older, time just seems to get, fly quicker and quicker. And I see my own death becoming more and more imminent. Um, just to, just watching the years tick by that they, they go by so fast. Um so again, I think again when we're, we're, when you see something that you're you think is unfair, I think it's important to instead of looking outward at what's unfair, look, look at inward and try to figure out you know what, what are you not dealing with, or uh, is is there is there possibly a reason God put that there so the, it could be a grow, growth opportunity for you. I guess that's right, all and I also did. you know was Christ was Christ above suffering or unfair treatment? Oh, right. Absolutely, you know, yeah. and that's so important. Yeah, because like whenever somebody's all been out of shape about what they perceive as unfair treatment, it, it, just remember what Christ put up with without ever being embittered. And you have you, what you said was very true about how sometimes it can be an indictment against God, because we all, we ultimately know that really whatever happens to us in life, whether or not you know God God directly decided it, it's it's His will in the end. You know, everything is by God's will, and so. He has a, a, you know, a purpose for it one way or another. And it's very hard to separate out, you know, God's will from, from events that happen to us or bad things people do to us. Um, because, you know, what about when, when, when um, God intervenes and prevents something bad from happening to us at the hand of another, you know, we'll credit him for that. But then when he allows it to happen, you know, getting resentful and, and, and full of like self-pity, really, it's a spirit of self-pity that um that i think that god has chastened me about and also um kind of educated me about in terms of you know looking at jesus and the example he said and how if if he wasn't too good to suffer such just evil cruel treatment from the world and hold his head up high the whole time and not and not be embittered and not blame them you know i mean he said you know they know not what they do and he had this um, this attitude of humility when, you know, he if anybody had a right to be prideful and egotistical and think that they deserved better, it was Jesus. And he didn't he didn't embrace that attitude. He had the exact opposite attitude. He was humble and he was um, accepting of the condition of the world. Like he he knew better right. than to expect any better yeah, from that's... them. And then but we 
Go on, go on. Yeah, I don't want to. No, no, I, I was just going to say that that was one of the most profound. So I know for you as well, Angel, I remember watching Passion of the Christ, and that was like one that really started uh, really me seeking God in earnest to really understand things. And one of the most profound insights I had at the time it may not sound like that way to most people, but it was for me. And even now I'm realizing that, you know, I'm coming kind of full circle on it is that I remember when I saw, saw that movie, you know, when Christ was on the cross and, you know, he said, father, why have you forsaken me? I realized that, you know, all the, all the, like you said, all the self pity, all the things that I was into my own self, I just realized the utter foolishness of it. Like, you know, if you think you're good at self pity, you know, uh, Christ did it better, you know, not, not that he did self pity, but he, he showed how, how foolish it was. And I made me feel so ridiculous and pathetic for uh, being uh, down on myself and self-loathing and just self-pitying and this or that is that, um, you know, Christ took all care of all that. And so he took care of all that so that we, we wouldn't have to deal with that. We, we, you know, with the right perspective, we shouldn't, ha- we shouldn't feel that way at all. If you have that perspective, you, you, your, your perspective, your perspective is wrong, you know, uh, Christ died so that we, we can, uh, uh, because we can, so we have a, a great, glorious future, and that's what we should be looking forward to. Not this temporal, earthly uh, hell, if you will, that we're already in. Right, right, and and that's the thing is like, you know, if <laughs> for me it's just a spirit of entitlement, just thinking I was entitled to better somehow implicitly. You know, I would never have like said it out loud or even consciously, but that's really what I was implying by thinking that I was above something or, or, um, uh, you know, above a certain level of treatment, not that, you know, you can see the treatment as, as wrong for what it is, but it's when you decide to get embittered and get a chip on your shoulder about it, that you're really embracing that spirit of pride and, um, thinking that you're, you know, because I didn't see Jesus ever do that. And he was certainly above that treatment. And so, um, obviously, these are things that these are standards that we we strive for and never can meet in the fallen flesh. I get that. But it's really just trying to operate in the spirit of truth where you at least see it for what it is, whether or not you fall prey to it once in a while. It's when you'll stand and defend it and and be really prideful in your argumentation and and uh, and not not understand that that, you know, we're not above suffering and we're not above um, mistreatment if, if, if Christ wasn't. So while you, that doesn't mean that you should tolerate it, that doesn't mean that you should invite it or let someone abuse you just because like out of weakness or whatever to where, you know, you're not doing them any favors by, by allowing them to act that way without actually calling it out. That's not what I'm saying, but it's, it's when you take that and then you develop resentment and an embittered attitude toward the world and a, an attitude of entitlement where you feel like a victim. That's where, it, that's where you where you are, you know, kind of giving into this spirit of, of entitlement and and not accepting the world for what it is um, and, and, and not accepting the state of man for what it is um, and, and, and having unrealistic expectations um, and, 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 you know, oftentimes unfair expectations yourself because, you know, you're not going to apply these expectations evenly across all situations. Um, you'll just kind of pick and choose what you get better about. And um for me, that's, that was one of the most freeing things is just basically um, recognizing I'm never a victim in any situation, um, not any more than anybody else is. You know what I mean? Like, you can be victimized, like, given the dynamics of the situation. There's, all, you know, there's a victim and a victimizer. I mean, uh, there's a victimizer and, you know, and the perpetrator. Um, but that doesn't mean that that becomes your identity or that, that or that in reality, that you are this pure, innocent victim in the situation. Usually there's some accountability you can take. And I've talked about that before, but, um, but it really all comes back to this idea of, of having unrealistic expectations of the world. Um, And just seeing how that, you know, I've talked to so many unbelievers, you know, who have these utopian ideas about what would fix humanity, you know, and, (laughs) and it's just like, I keep always coming back to the idea that they're expecting fair play where fair play is just not possible in this world. Fair play is not possible with, you know, in the state of fallen man, it's just not possible. And it's like expecting, I don't know, you might as well just be expecting to grow wings and fly away, you know? And if you're always, if you, you're setting yourself up for a resentment, 
you know, uh, or disappointment when you're expecting something entirely impossible and entirely just unrealistic all the time. Um, and, and then that makes you feel like you have been like, the, the, you know, basically that you're that you're a victim. And I just don't even see Christ embracing that mentality. So uh, and we could say he certainly was a victim of, of, you know, of mankind with what happened to him. But we just don't see him embody that attitude. And so I think that that's the least we can do is to check our expectations against the nature of man, the nature of creation at the, t- at the moment where it's, it's fallen. And it's just, I think, descending ever more into wickedness and corruption the further away we get from the fall. So I don't know if uh, Jordan or Lisa have any thoughts on that, but yeah, that's just that's kind of something I wanted to touch on because um, I think, I don't know, for me, it really has helped me have a much... Uh, I don't get upset about a whole lot anymore. <laughs> you know, I don't, uh, I, I don't find myself, I pretty, have a pretty laid back attitude and it kind of tends to help me understand other people and navigate um, disagreements and um, things like that with, with just this understanding of, of human nature. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't remember the last time I got really resentful about something. Um, it also helps me forgive. I'll say that. In fact, even before I was saved, I would say I had an easy time forgiving people. Um, so maybe this was just an understanding that was easier for me to come to. Um, but, but now it's much more informed by scripture and the true nature of, you know, of fallen humanity. And, um, and it just, uh, I just noticed, I don't, I don't carry a grudge. Uh, I don't form a grudge against the world or against other people um, very easily. So or, or at all. I'm trying to think of the last time. <laughs> I, I don't really, I just don't really hold grudges. I would say that that's like one thing that, um, that I don't struggle with. And I think that it's a, a helpful attitude to have. And I didn't really know why I had that attitude, especially as a lost person. But now with a full understanding of, you know, a lot of principles of creation and the fall, it seems to, it seems to, you know, kind of explain what, what, what somehow I always kind of knew in my gut about why I didn't hold on to things uh, like that or get uh, get a, a chip on my shoulder about a whole lot of things. So I think, you know, the most thing I did have a chip on my shoulder about was God himself as an unbeliever, um, basically kind of always knowing he was there and being bitter that it did, he didn't make it easier to see him in my mind at the time, like that he made it feel like a risk to believe in him, right? I mean, like I was risking, like getting my hopes up. So I was bitter about that, but... Anyway, so I don't know what you guys have to say about uh, that. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, I told it. I so there's been a, a condition in my life, for example, that I thought was unfair, and it, you know, it, it's bothered me for forever, and to the point where I get so frustrated, I almost feel out of body. It, it, it was just like I felt like, I why I just wanted, I just wanted to, to, to just scream out to God, you know, it's like unbearable. But once I realized it, it accepted the fact that you know what, it's not a matter of God not giving me something that He's that He's withholding something. It's he. It's for my good. It's for my good. I don't understand it, but I know it's for my good, and I'm going to accept that. And 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 that's it. I I accept that and let it go. And once I did that, I just like I just felt like a, a huge sense of relief. Like I don't have to be, uh, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to play the devil's games anymore. You know, I don't have to listen to those voices. Um, it, I just felt free. I just felt free. It's like okay, I can go. I can move on to the next level. Or I can move on to the next thing. Um. Because there's a lot of, you know, if you dwell on those things, they, they do, I think you might be surprised about how much mental energy and emotion you invest in those things um, and what a vacuum they are. To, and, and so now if you could just redirect that to something else, you, I think you, you realize that um, it's just it's just free. It's freedom. It's, it's truly freedom. And it helps your maturity. I think right. it, helps, it really helps your spiritual maturity to... Uh, because a lot of, you know, what, what do I think of when I think of, that's not fair. I think of a little kid, a little kid saying, that's not fair. Because they, you know, they have these unrealistic expectations of other people. And, 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 you know, they, they'll get really upset over, you know, it's, it's a lot of times it's really not even unfair. What they're saying isn't fair. But, and I think a lot of times we look at, we, we look that way in God's eyes when we get that attitude. We're not even, you know, we're not really even looking at the, 
at the situation from a an unbiased perspective and you know it's one you know we'll, we'll zero in on what we think is unfair regarding us or something that concerns us but um we we, we stop there we don't look we don't you know expand out and see the whole situation and and you know all the other things that led up to it and we just focus it on that one one aspect of it that bothers us but really um you know it it, it, it kind of stunts your growth because it is like a a childish Absolutely does. way to look at things. Yep. You stop growing so, at that point. You're only going to grow up to that point. I, I, yes, definitely. Because my dad gets hung up there. My dad definitely gets hung up there when he gets bitter about things that are, my, and, and my aunt, both my dad and my aunt both get, you know, hung up there a lot. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I'm so glad that I don't anymore. <laughs> That's good. Well, guys, you know what time it is. We have made it to the end of the broadcast. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed our discussion, a little bit of preaching, a little bit of trivia, some tips that were earlier in the broadcast. If you missed any part of it, um, you can replay it. The chat will also replay. I'm very thankful to everyone who joined us this evening. We had a lot of liveliness going on. And I hope to Sergeant Flores that uh, the things that we said to you and everyone else who is listening later on, that it will minister to you because it's all the truth. Jesus is the truth. None of us are getting paid to do any of this. And we're not, you know, religious zealots and nuts. I mean, uh, Angel came to her faith after being an atheist. She's born to Christian parents who were quite puzzled as to the gift the Lord had given, <laughs> that had given them a child that didn't believe. But I was talking to her about that. <laughs> I was talking to her about that one night and I said, probably they put you to bed. You would say such things to them. And they weren't bothered because they had already placed her in the hands of the Lord. And look where she ended up. See, that, that's really the power did. of prayer and simple faith in Christ. They claimed you for the kingdom and look where you at. And it's amazing. I'm very <laughs> impressed when I look back because my family's maturity is not all that great sometimes. But when it came to that, they were very mature and, and child. It was a childlike faith. It really it was. was. It was just something they didn't question. They couldn't imagine he'd let me fall. They couldn't imagine it for a second. They knew what him too well. Thing. What a yeah. beautiful thing to simply trust in the Lord like a little child who takes their parents' hand and they have no idea where you're going and what you're doing. They just going with you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then Brother Ben, thank you for everything that you shared this evening. I truly appreciate it. He is a man of few words, y'all. Y'all should feel privileged that Brother Ben spoke up this evening <laughs> to a lot of things. I always tease him about it. But um he doesn't say a lot. But when he does say something, it's very important, and it's always a, always a blessing. Brother Jordan, Brother Jordan, my very special friend, <laughs> my very special friend. Did, did you fall asleep, Jordan? No, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, do you still have your your crown and your, what the heck is that thing called? <laughs> I'm done with you. I'm actually done talking to you. <laughs> I truly cannot hold on to that thing. Um, okay, whatever that thing is. Do you still have it on or did you take it off? Oh, no. Once we start preaching the gospel and everything, all that stuff comes off and my hair okay. goes in a man bun and it's time for okay. war. So. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear. the man bun of war. <laughs> 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 oh, oh right. I, I could just imagine it. <laughs> <laughs> Your cloak. That was it. Your cloak. Okay. I hope you hung it up and you didn't throw it behind the desk. You know, you got to treat your stuff with, you know, some form of appreciation. You just being good money. I'm throwing it behind the desk. That's where the wasp is. You still. Oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> All right. You got to work on that whole cleanliness is next to godliness thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank you all for joining us I have a broadcast that I'll be doing this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific 10 p.m. Eastern it's called for the lonely it's not just for the lonely but it is for the lonely those who are feeling really lonely right now I started the Lord place on my heart because of people who are 
like shut-ins right now. You know, the Bible actually has a scripture that says, remember the shut-ins? Well, lately it's been all of us at one time or another with the craziness that is going on. No matter, no matter where you fall on the uh, spectrum of what you yeah, believe about it and what you don't. I live in Indiana. <laughs> we didn't have any of that crap. I, or if we did, nobody, nobody listened. So praise mm -hmm. God. But yes, I know. I feel bad for you guys. Real shame. Well, yeah, you don't live you in the People's the Republic of California. So, I know. Exactly. and then out here we have, well, they, <laughs> they're having a, a recall election for, what's his name? Any to some new some, I don't remember. Uh, he used to be oh. the mayor for San Francisco. That's how he got that nickname because he was He's the Nancy one who Pelosi's actually, nephew. yeah, that pushed for the whole um, Gross. homosexual marriage agenda out here. And so that's how he got the nickname. And then, I can't believe they made him governor, but they did. And now they have a recall election going, which I don't really get involved in politics because I think it's two sides of the same Luciferian coin. Oops, did I say that out loud? So uh, well, they now actually. Well, Dinner's going to save the day. Well, it's yeah, I was. <laughs> you stole my thunder, Sister Angel. I was going to mention that um, Bruce Jenner, no, wait, it's not Bruce Jenner, it's Caitlyn Jenner that is uh, stepping forward to run. And then I, I wish somebody could explain this to me. Maybe you know, Angel, why every single person who's ever been involved in porn is a porn star versus a porn something else. I don't know, but she's actually going to run. Her name escapes me right now. I wasn't really paying attention to tell you the truth. I mean, it's one big circus. And then they have a couple of other characters that are running. So um, this is going to be interesting. Uh, all while we're on still semi lockdown and no one's sure whether or not when you have the vaccine, if you're now exempt or you're not exempt and whether or not you can take the mask on or you still have to have it. You know, it's a lot of confusion going on right now. So just keep us in prayer for all the believers out here who have to suffer through this garbage that's going on. Uh, it's real in places like California and New York and some of these other big cities where they're exacting all these control measures measures that are absolutely demonic on their face. But, you know, just please keep us in prayer. We're, all of us are not as free as Sister Angel out there in Indiana. And let's see, Ben. Yeah, uh, and, so. yeah. thank you. I, I, I didn't it. notice Florida being that much more free. Like, like everyone's like, oh, Florida, go there. It's the promised land. And I mean, <laughs> I saw more crap going on there than I ever saw here, even after the shutdown. I mean, like, like there was people actually making you wear masks if you just in stores, even though like like it wasn't a mandate, but they you know, I haven't had like it's been very rare that that's happened here. Um, but uh yeah, in Florida it's just you know, I don't know, just don't place all your eggs in that basket, guys. That's all I'm saying. You know, right. There's, yeah, there's lot, as, somebody that just, as somebody that <laughs> just moved back from Tampa, restrictions I, I don't get it either. <laughs> yeah, mm. I mean I lived there my whole life and I mean I, I you know People are looking at Florida in a way I never thought people would look at Florida. Let's just put it that way. It's not, it, I, I, you know, I don't know. I think, think it's like this big conservative <laughs> wonderland. Uh, I don't know. I'm surprised as anybody else that's going the way it's going because the people there are not, uh, I don't know. They're not on the up and up. Let's just say Florida uh, man uh. exists for a reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bless his heart. Bless Florida man's heart. <laughs> can't hold him down. I'm really not going to let what happened last week happen again where Ben texted me in the middle of the week and said, you guys, Said you were going to end the broadcast and went on for another <laughs> hour. And and Ben didn't interrupt. He's just sitting back there laughing and having a good time. So he's equally to blame. So yeah, if you want to join me. <laughs> so if you want to join me Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I, I It's funny because Ben mentioned something uh, in the chat before we came on tonight. Uh, I'm going to finish up on the. 100 scriptures that I had started to prove faith alone and Christ alone, but I was also going to start if I had enough time this coming Wednesday on the book of Proverbs. So Ben, you've been looking at my notes. So anyway, <laughs> thank you guys for joining us. And I hope to see you again next Saturday night here on late night with Lisa and friends where hopefully we'll get to my topic and Ben's topic and <laughs> Jordan's topic and Sister Angel's topic next week because we just go where the spirit leads us. And if somebody comes in and they do need help, we'll drop everything to 
minister to that person because that is really what it's all about. Seeking and saving that which is lost. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Good night and good morning.